Chuffy one, check, check, Chuffy two. Hi. Hi. I assume this is working now. It's just you're going live, you're going live. Hi, you're with Scott. I'm Ganji Kid. I'm the Grave Kipper. I'm the Super Chuffer. That's who I am. I'm the Super Chuffer. Hi, I assume this is working now. It's just yeah. I can hear it. You can hear it. Okay. Super Chuffer. Super Chuffer. Right. So I always say at the start of every episode, it's midnight. It's always midnight. That's my little catchphrase. Hi, you're with Scott. I'm the Super Chuffer. It's midnight. It's always midnight. That's my little catchphrase. Got that done. I can see you all in chat. Hello there. Hello, Dean. Hello, Jasmine. Hello, Tina. Hello, Just Gone Viral. Hello, uh, Tina Leons. Hello, Susan. I hope you're doing okay, Susan. We're going to try and cheer you up a bit today, Susan. Try and take your mind off things a bit. Uh, hello, Andy. I would like to get a nice vape, I'll tell you. Hello, Marisol. Hello, Docky Silver. Hello, anyone I haven't mentioned. Uh, I've got a bit, of a bit of a big one for you tonight. Okay, this is the Super Chuffer channel. Make sure you subscribe because you get bangers like this. Nicola Bully Psychic says his gift guided her, guided him to her location. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to take a look at the psychic himself. And I have found, I've been doing some digging. Googled him. I've been doing some, Googled him. I've been doing some digging. Googled him. Hello. This is live, Pink Soda. This is live. I can prove it. Look. Uh, I don't know. You know, how do I prove it? I'll stand up. There you go. So it's, it, you wouldn't be able to stand up if it wasn't live. Uh, so we're going to look at to we're going to look at this guy, Jason Dean Rothwell, and I tell you what, we're going to have a right blast today. We've got him doing some psychic readings, he, dressed up in his um, dressed up like he, uh, he dressed up like he works at the Weatherspoons at the airport. Look, he's dressed up like he works at Weatherspoons at the airport. We're going to be. <laughs> I know, I know, listen, I know, this is a big serious case. Can we restore the trust in the police? You know, people are asking questions on Lorraine. We've got Curtis Media, they've changed their name from Nicola Bully Case to Curtis Media. I have actually approached Curtis Media for an interview. Three emails, they've emailed me back and said maybe. So hopefully Curtis Media might be interested in doing an interview with us. As long as I don't seem so, like, weird today, I think they might look at it and go, oh, this is quite a good channel, we might do that. So I've opened the door to Curtis Media. Maybe they will, this used to be called the Nicola Bully Case channel or whatever. So we had lots of questions about, oh, why did this channel start and what happened? I've emailed them. They've emailed me back. I've emailed them all the questions. I'm waiting to see if they'll do it. If they'll do it, we get any, we get in a, uh, a live interview with Curtis Media, who's been down on the scene, who's been making all these videos, we're going to get a live interview. Hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm just waiting on them to see if they want to do it. So, you know, fingers crossed everyone for that. And tomorrow, I want to go over this Lorraine interview. I want to pick up some loose ends with loose women tomorrow. We're going to finish off Paul Ansel. We're going to finish off his red flags because we've still got 10 minutes of that red flag video to look through. And we want to cover the police released a statement uh, on behalf of the family and we watched it on stream didn't we but apparently that was edited and there's a longer version so I want to go through the whole long version do all the the red flagging so tomorrow same sort of time tea time-ish evening time we're going to do more serious Paul red flags tying up loose ends but today right so let me bin off these windows because I've got too many windows more windows than Buckingham Palace mate if you don't get confused right super chuffer subscribe we just hit 2K. I am blown away. Thank you for all your amazing support over the last couple of days. Thank you for that. Just hit 2K. Let's keep pushing. Let's go to 10K. Let's keep pushing. Let's go. And this is my coffee.com site. You can tip me here. I get most of the money if you tip me from here. I get like the majority cut. Now you can give me a super chat on YouTube. That's a new thing. You can give me a super chat on YouTube. I'm grateful for it all. So if you want to tip me, this is probably the best place because you can get it all, you can, all, I get most of it, you know, there's still a little cut for the people that do the, the website, but I don't mind, but like YouTube take like 50%, these chuffers don't take as much, so you've got that, and this is something that we use, I have that on the screen when we do our chuffing, which is send me a voice message, now listen, after the last show, we had an enormous response, hello squirrel sniper, hello snippies, keep on chuffing, choo choo, choo. <laughs> Snippies, it's going well. It's going well, isn't it? I'll see you on the uh, the Twitch stream at some point for a bit of a deeper chat, Snippies, but this is going well. So if you want to send me a voice message, I'm opening that up again. If you want any more voice messages on the Nicola Bully discussion, anything we covered today, after our chat with these mediums, 
One of them looks like a large, the other one looks like a small. After our chat with these mediums, we're going to be talking Nicola Bully again tomorrow and we're going to be doing more red flagging. So if you want to get on that again, I've, I've got other messages now building up. I told you not to send me any more messages, you chuffers. And they sent me more messages. So we're going to do call-in show again tomorrow. We're doing loose ends, loose women, calling. That's tomorrow's schedule. Try and fit it all in. So that's open again if you want that. Speak pipe, it's called speak pipe super chuffer. I'll copy that into chat as well. So you can send me a little message and we can hear them on the show. Now, now, I tell you, you're gonna, it's, you're not gonna, I have to show you a little bit. I have to show you a little bit before we get started. Just a random bit. Look, I'll just skip on. This is the chap um, that they're making reference to. The baby passed to the spirit world um, via miscarriage, but this baby would be knocking on for 40 years old at the moment. So it would be... Talking about a 40-year-old baby there. This guy, right, dressed up like he's working in Wetherspoons at the airport, right? This guy... <sighs> Look at him with his little waistcoat. I'm not playing snooker now, you chuffer. This guy is the guy that found Nicola Bully. So we're going to watch this Daily Record video, which is quite a popular video, I'm led to believe. Quite a lot of you chuffers out there watch this. So we're going to watch it. It's only a minute, and then we're going to go into an actual voice chat with Dean Rothwell. I'm going to find out all about him, courtesy of Tony Swindles. Um, we will discuss psychic stuff in a second. You know, let's just watch this official news, daily record, bulletin. Oh, music, I don't need your crap music. Psychic says his gift guided him to Nicola Bully's location. His gift. There he is. There he is. Wait, wait, don't let that skip on. Look at his T-shirt. Now, I do like a jazzy T-shirt, right? I do like a jazzy T-shirt, but this T-shirt is particularly jazzy. Isn't it? Look, it's like a rose. It's quite nice, actually. And then he's paired it with a slaginger, slaginger. How do you pronounce that? Slaginger, slaginger, puma. It's puma. He's, he's paired it with a puma zip top. Nice and dowdy on the zip top. Keep that extravagant side covered up. We're going to see his extravagant side tonight. Uh... Don't worry, you're not missing any sound. It's just weird music. The body of the mother of two was pulled from the river wire. That's sad. We looked at it. You know, we're not going to go too dark and dank today. We're not going to look at pictures of her being dragged out of the river today. We're going to have a cheerful one. I told you. I warned you. I don't just do dark and miserable. I also do cheerful chuffing. I warned you. Um... A, look at this, though. A significant search operation was launched on land and in air, which went nearly 14 miles to sea. Look, there they are on the boat. Look, they're down in the river with their goggles on. You know, when you go into water and you can't see anything, oh, it's all the water in my eyes. Oh, get me the goggles. I've got my goggles on. I can have a look. And then you go into the water and all their legs are going under the water. You know, I don't think I should be looking at this. I'm going to come out now. I don't think I should be looking at this, actually. I haven't worn a pair of goggles since I grew up. Just drop me lighter. I haven't worn a pair of goggles since I grew up. And when you're a kid, it's fine. But I don't think adults with goggles on should be under the water looking at people up their dresses. They don't wear a dress in this in the swimming pool. Um... So his, her body was found by Jason Dean Rothwell. He and a friend were seen alongside the river wire at the weekend, appearing to assist police with the location and recovery of body. Someone sent tippies. Straight off. Straight off we've got tippies off someone. And I know that that someone buy me a coffee there. They don't say who they are. So I'm just going to have to say thank you. And I don't know who you are. But I do appreciate it. I really do. I do. It's, it's fast become. You know what? I'll say this outright today before we get going any further. I, I really appreciate your support. I'm going to turn it into something bigger than you imagine. And I got like over £100 on the last one, or, or in the last week or so, in total, across all platforms, I've gathered up over £100. I think that's massive. And that's gone straight in the kitty. And that's like started off a travel budget to me. All I need is a little bit more, and I'm away somewhere to show you something interesting. You wait. You wait. You watch. Super Chuffer channel. Make sure you subscribe. Right. Uh... Appearing to assist police. Appearing, there he is. That, that's them. The other day. That's him. He's not wearing his jazzy t-shirt there. He's got his parker on instead. That's him and his mate. This is him. Jason states he wasn't asked by the police or Nicola's family to help, but that it was his gift that compelled him to offer assistance. So it's a weird one, that, isn't it? Because initially, they did ask everyone to help. They were like, oh, can anyone come down and have a look? And then after a bit, they were like, oh, can you stop looking now? Probably leave us alone. And it's his gift that compelled him to offer assistance. Here he is talking on a microphone, very jazzy shirt again. Do you know what? Maybe I should have worn a jazzier shirt today. I'm going to have to get myself a jazzier shirt. I'm not competing here, am I? Very jazzy shirt. And there he is. Look, there's some ladies looking at him with kind of stern. This one's got a stern expression and the other one's got a bit of a smile. 
I don't know what he's saying, but they find it to be kind of, uh, and a bit, <laughs> so that, that is a loud shirt, isn't it? You know, do you think if he could speak to the spirit guides, my spirit guides telling me that he needs to rein it in. My spirit guides telling me don't, don't buy that shirt. If I, if you've been out shopping and you're a proper psychic, yeah, you're proper psychic, your spirit guide would tell you, look, you're going to look stupid in that. Don't buy that shirt. What are you thinking? Right. Anyway, let's carry on. This is the important video that the Daily Record released. There he is. In a statement, he also claims to have helped with the recovery of Michael Brooks, a 19-year-old who was found in a Lancashire river in February 2018. So that's a bit of a worry, isn't it? If you're connected with two river deaths, it's a little bit of a worry. But yeah, you're connected with two river deaths. Here, this is a picture. I think it's a still from like a, a video or a live. And in it, we can see he's got like his sock rail or his tie rack up there behind him. Nice mirrors on the walls. Um, thick red dark paint on the walls as well and he's holding a ball so very cheerful at the moment we're going to get into it don't worry we're going to get into it hello from Serbia Serbia and Montenegro Neil Poir uh, hello Serbia hello Serbia oh uh, hello UK hello UK yeah and could, could we have the results from the Serbia and Montenegro for the Eurovision Song Contest 2022. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, hello UK, hello UK. UK, nil point. Um, sorry, I just went off on one there. My spirit guide was telling me. Um, Ukraine will win again. Yeah, that's the only fucking thing they're going to win, isn't it? Because they're not going to win that war. Ooh, don't get me started. Ooh, don't get me started. Uh, that war's got to have to go on and on because we need to sell a lot of guns. I'll have you know. We need to sell a lot of guns. We've been stockpiling ammunitions in our country. We make a lot of guns and planes. Boris Johnson's mates, they make a lot of guns and planes. Hello, Snips. 20, 20 of the American dollars there. I'll have to wait to... I'll have to save them up till I go to America before I can spend them. For a jazzy charity shop shirt, I will. I tell you what, I shop in the charity shops. Snips knows me. I'm in and out of those charity shops. I'm in and out of those charity shops like a... I won't say what I'm thinking. Um, greetings and love from America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, that new super chat system is away. Snippies, my very first super chatter, is appropriate. She's my first super chatter because Snippies is one of my first sub supporters, subscribers. Consider her a friend after all these years. Very grateful to have her here. There he is, look, excited by his ball in his hand. Look, how's that staying there? It must be magic. Uh, yesterday morning, it was myself and a friend who reported and assisted the police. He doesn't talk like me. You'll find out in a second. In the recovery of a body from the River Wire, Jason Dean, that's his quote. I was not asked by the police or Nicholas family to become involved in the case, but having seen the wild speculation and hurtful commentary, that's me, that's been ongoing, hurtful I am, and having previously assisted in the recovery of Michael Brooks, I decided to use whatever gift, whatever gift. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. It went too quick, you fucker. Whatever gift it is we mediums possess to try and locate Nicola Bully. Now, right, this is something important. I know that I'm going to offend some people if I go in hard on the mediums. This one looks more like a small. I know that I'm going to... That one's a large. I know that I'm going to get shit off people who believe in the spiritual. I'm going to time out disclaimer at the top of this top of the show, yeah? You ready? I'm not going to say that you can't have psychics and, and that stuff. I'm going to say I'm pretty sceptical, me personally, but that's not what this show's about, okay? I will open the, the world of thought to anyone out there who's a deep believer in this spiritual stuff. I'll open the world of thought that it could be possible, could be possible. If you, on the other side, will open the world of thought that some people could be bollocks, charades, talking a load of shit... Like some people again, might. Hello, Big D Sharps, I'm Tippies. Got my hands in the air for the Tippies now, like I've been robbed. Quick. Um, uh, some people might just be making it up. It might be a load of bollocks, yeah? Will you agree with that? Can we all agree with that? Buy me a coffee there. Look, say thanks, I'm supposed to, but I'm saying it now on the internet. So, you know, I'm saying it thanks on the internet. That's nice chucking me a fiver like that. That's really, I really appreciate it. Cheers, buddy. Uh, this is going to all go to the big kitty and I'll show you one day what we're doing with it. Uh, so, these psychics, these mediums, these smalls, these super larges, like some of them might just be bollocks, right? And I'll tell you what, thank you, Wendy, with the tippies. Thank you, Wendy, with the tippies. We've got more of these tippies flying in now. Keep on chuffing, I certainly will do. You just stopped me, you just distracted me. It's all right, I love the, dist I love the distraction when it's money. 
lovely distracting money right um so this guy jason right he might be a real legit psychic who can speak to his spirit guide like i can or he might be just some chuffer right bear in mind we don't know him yet we're about to find out but he might be some chuffer who's not doing so well for himself who needs a bit of success a bit of money a bit of like jesus andy slate thank you thank you thank you andy slate with the tippies now Andy Slate in the kitty with the tippies. Your names go on here. You know, it's recorded. So, you know, you should feel proud of yourself. And one day I'll go through and read all of your names in a big long list. In a big thank you list. I said, I said it now. I said thank you. Look, so this chuffer, he might be a real one or he might not. You've got to open your mind to that, yeah? If you are into the psychic, into the mediumship, sometimes the large, then you will open your mind to the fact that some people are just bullshitting. The worst thing about a person who bullshits about this is not that they're making themselves popular. It's not that they're getting some money out of it. It's not that they're getting something out of it. It's that the people that love people that are hurt, that are missing, that are lost, that are maybe dead, those people can be really hurt by some of this nonsense really hurt by it really hurt so i'm just going to quickly show you i just google it look I, sh I got this prepared actually but i didn't have it up but uh psychic who was found out to be a fraud if i do that you're going to get some videos and i know there's one that i had um lined up but i don't have it here because i'm an Id idiot did i do it on my phone where did i do it Let's do it on YouTube quick. Like quick, quick though, because they're all waiting to watch this chuffer. Like, you all know what a fraud psychic looks like, don't you? Psychic, medium. There was more. Kit, kit, kilted sent me some tips. Scottish style tips. Psychic, medium, proved fraud. Look, this guy's a psychic buster. Oh, there's a video there that I want to watch, a big react, the bizarre world of fake psychics. So on another episode, we'll have a good go on it, yeah? But just, you know, take it from me, without me giving you a big breakdown of it, that some people are fake psychics. This was the one. This was the one I wanted. Psychic was dead wrong. One thing to be a psychic predicting love, or the lack thereof. Can you tell me where my love life's going? No. Skip. Now she's under attack. What a horrible human being. For being wrong about this girl. So Amanda Barry went missing. This psychic told her mother that she was dead and probably in the water. Her mother went home, devastated. A year later, she was dead herself. Her mother couldn't hack it. Heartbreak. You know, these things tear you apart. And then it turned out she wasn't dead. It turned out she'd been kidnapped, which isn't jolly or jovial or a bit of a punchline. But it is kind of funny in one way because, like, you know, the psychic talked a load of shit on the telly and got found out. So these people can hurt people. Like, you know they can hurt people. Mary S., thank you for your tippies. Thank you for the tippies. Look at that. Pow, pow, pow. Loving the shows, buddy. Says Andy Slate there. If I reload it, now we've got Kilted. Thank you for being the sane antidote to Grisella, the narrative grifter. Sorry, I, I don't know Grisella, so I'm reading your chat there without, um, without passing it. So um, That's your opinion on her, not mine, but I don't know her, so I've never watched it's any of her stuff. Um, <laughs> but thanks. Martin with the tippies. Um, and Martin didn't say anything, so I can just carry on, but thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so we know that's a dangerous thing to do. If you like, I will still say, remember though, you know, time out disclaimer, if you're really into this shit, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and I'll say it could be possible, but I've not seen it done. All right, now let's get into it. Enough chuffing now, look. Enough chuffing. Hello, Lindy Lou. He was fishing for the women, says Invisible Ray. Popeye the Sailor Man. He's Popeye the Sailor Man. He lives in a caravan. When he goes swimming, he kisses the women. He's Popeye the Sailor Man. Do you remember that? Right, here we go then. Here we go. And this is important. This is big. So I'm going to start right from the start. It's an hour and 20, so that'll probably take me three hours to get through. I've got to let it run. Might not get through all of it. Let's learn. Let's find out. Let's chat with Jason Dean Rothwell. One of the things I love, and I, when I say I love, I love the start of this. Look at this. Dun, dun, dun. We use StreamYards and the music is rocking dun, dun, dun. and the intro is coming. Dun, dun, dun. You don't need to fuck about with this. Just go straight into your episode. <laughs> yeah, appropriate music. We're going to be talking about the dead. <laughs> We're going to be contacting the dead. We're the little rock and roll. 
You can email Tony Swindles Medium. Now, listen, in the UK, swindling, I don't know if you know this in everywhere in America, swindling. Oh, you know what swindling? Anyone tell me what swindling is? No, you've got it in chat. You've got it in chat. Someone's laughing already. Swindling, the de dictionary definition in the UK, is to use deception to deprive someone of money or possessions. A businessman swindled investors out of millions of pounds. Ooh. To obtain money fraudulently. That's the that's the definition. <laughs> that's the definition, Tony. Tony. Oi, oi, oi. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello welcome. Tony. Welcome, welcome. Um, so we've got Tony Swindles on the left, and we've got Jason. This is a couple of years ago, but it's our best way of learning about Jason. He's going to tell us about himself. So Tony on the left, Jason on the right. It's an absolutely gorgeous day today. Um, I'm here with, uh, hang on, let's, he, I, let's get this right back, that way. <laughs> now listen, I've got nothing against, I, me personally, I, I think it's wonderful everyone's got different opinions, we can share them all. I've got nothing against people who want to live the way they live. I've got nothing against jazzy shirts, I've got nothing against painting your nails, I've got nothing against that. You can dress however the fuck you want, I'm not going to critique you on it. But immediately... There was a bit of a shock to my system where I saw old Tony Swindles with his glasses and his, his grey hair and then this really glamorous, like, nails and... I, I just thought it just... I didn't expect... Anyway. Lovely Jason Rothwell, who some of you might have seen at... Um, is that his hand or has he got his missus down there pointing? Listen, love, I'm going to be using the mouse and the keyboard today because I'm going to be in charge of the computer while I'm doing this interview. When I need to point, can you point at the man for me? We did the service passages green. Uh, this is just one of those chat wicks that I do. It's going to be quite loose. I've, I've got a few little... It's going to be as loose as your anyway. ...questions that Jason's already seen. But please, if you've got any... As loose as your bum hole. <laughs> you want to ask, drop it into comments. And we'll, we'll pick up and answer as many... And that's not homophobic. That's because he's... Anyway, look, I, I love people of all denominative and genders. I don't, I don't give a shit. You know, I do not give a shit. You can be as gay as a stick, mate. It doesn't bother me. But what does bother me is the creepy swindling people of money by pretending to talk to their dead loved ones. If you're not a real psychic who can actually talk to them. Anyway, let's... Yes, we can during the, the time we've got together. Um, I will ask Jason to just do a quick opening prayer just to set the intention for the, for the hour or so we're going to be spending together, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy days. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. <clears throat> I call to gracious and divine spirit, you who are the essence of the eternal circle, the hoop of life. The hoop of life. I'll, I'll tell you about your hoop, mate. Listen, I'm not going to let him tell, do the prayer because I think it might be black magic. I'll skip it. But I'll pick out now, right, just being a bit surface level. I don't want to be too surface level i don't want to be too surface level listen and as well right like i don't think i you know i know people who are gay i love them like, i've got friends who are gay they're lovely people it's not being gay is a bad thing like i wouldn't call people like names like that um overall it won't be put up within chat over a long period of time but you know a few a few things here and there i'll let go but uh these particular gay people i'm not happy with i didn't even know he might not be gay this might be as big an act as the psychic business. So you just got to be careful. You know, you certainly have to be careful around these two. Look, Jason, over his shoulder here. Now, I, this is a choice, right? This is a choice for Jason. I can't do my pointing. I need a woman to point for me. Men can't do proper pointing. Sexist. Sexist bastard. Over his shoulder, right, you've got teddy bears. He's chosen that. He's gone for that. That's his choice. Oh, we're doing my interview today. Doing my interview today. Mom, mom, where's my blue vest? Mom, is my blue vest in the wash? Or can I, don't, well, I shouldn't shout that. My mom might hear me and think she's been walking the dog and she's uh, brought me some cough medicines around. Um, I've got a bad cold today, actually. If, if I ever have to blow my nose, I'll turn it down and blow my nose. Anyway, it's by the by. Look, Mom, where's my vest? <laughs> I need my vest because I'm doing my interview, my big interview. I need my vest. Hello, stay happy. What's happening? This is a chat with Jason Dean Rothwell. This is the man who found... This is the psychic medium, could be a small, who found Nicola Bully. So we're investigating him and his character the best way I know how by watching him tell us about himself. So he's got his teddy bears. That's a choice. That's a choice. A very fucking creepy choice, but a choice all the same. He's wearing his vest. That's a choice. Again, kind of a creepy choice, isn't it? I mean, it might be hot where he is. 
But it's kind of a creepy choice. He's wearing it. Is, is that his vest? Oh, mom, my best vest is in the wash. It's not ready. Well, you can just wear my blouse. You can wear me crop top. You can wear, what are they called? Halter top, crop top. What are they called? You can wear me blouse. Anyway, look. The Union of Humanity. Me fan way. I ask that you allow myself and my friends to converse with you. Yeah, okay. We're going to skip the prayer. I'm not having this. I don't care if you're psychic. I don't care if you're Jewish, Muslim or a chuffing Hindu. I'm not listening to this nonsense. But Tony's got his eyes closed the whole time. Look. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The one, two, now and forever, God. He who is, is a eternal chicken? life. The one, two, now and forever, God. That was a chicken. God in the name. Oh, it's a dog in it. The one, two, now and forever, God. He who is eternal life and everlasting love. Amen. 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 Oh, it's a double meaning one. No, no, no. Thank you for that. That was lovely. No, no, no. Listen, listen. I'll tell you what. I will make some jokes. I've seen Dave, I've seen Graham Norton on the telly making jokes about his own... Anyway, look. I'll make jokes, but I will not stand for any homophobia or anything like that, all right? Let's be clear. Let's be clear. Um, honestly, now. I'll make jokes, but I won't stand for homophobia. Um, Snips there, 149 in the super chats with the little doggy. Thank you. Really nice. Really nice prayer. Really nice prayer. Um, Good morning like to everybody. Said, it's yes, good me. morning, Leander, Paul, everybody who's watching. Thank you for spending this. Paul's watching, he said. I don't know which Paul, but. Time with us when you could be doing so many other things. That's a terrible thing to say at the start of your broadcast. Don't come on the broadcast and say, I don't know why you're here with me when you could be doing something else with your life. You'll put them off, you chuffer. Get that finger out your eye. You don't know where it's been. Like sitting in the garden and getting a nice tan. Drinking gin <laughs> before dinner time. <laughs> yes being reckless as as we can be um, okay i just noticed tony there did a like sniff, sniff in it, it might become a repeating theme we'll see uh we follow a streamer on my this channel and my b-side a little bit who does a lot of like sniveling and snorting when he's on stream he refuses to blow his nose i think tony might be another one of them so did you hear it then maybe he's on the sniff he's certainly doing some sniffing in this in this chat um just what would you like people who don't know you? Susie, sorry, yeah, I don't know exactly when this was uh, recorded. This is two years old, though. This isn't modern day exactly right now. This is two years old, so um, things might have changed since then. Certainly, Jason has changed in so far as he's still a medium, still doing things that I consider to be quite out there and still wearing the jazzy clothes. But other than that, he might have changed. Who are watching to know about Jason Rothwell? You know, when you sent me those questions this morning, and I did actually skim back through them. I think I realised that that is the hardest question for me to answer. One of them's got their fucking telly on. I think I realised that that is the hardest question for me to answer. Um, and I think the only way to answer it is to sort of stick to the rudiments. My name is Jason. Uh, We've covered that, you fucking knob. Wakey, wakey, Jason. Wakey, wakey, can you please describe yourself? Well, my name begins with a J, second letter A. N at the end. Not so sure about the others, but, you know, you get the gist. I stick to the rudiments. My name is Jason. Hello, D look, uh, Dean, D Dean, <laughs> Dean. They won't stand for that on YouTube, right? The N word. They won't stand for that on YouTube. Although, me personally, I find it quite a funny uh, uh, slur. No, it's not going to be stood for. I'm not going to slander this person for his sexuality. I'm going to slander him for being a fucking weirdo. How about that, yeah? The teddy bears, the crop top, like, that's all fair. Well, maybe not the clothes, but a lot of this is going to be fair game. But you've got to be careful. You know, I can't, I should moderate that chat if, <laughs> you know, I shouldn't I? Uh, my name means to him. Like, honestly, I won't, like, in real world, if there was somebody who was a bit different and someone was going to bully them for being a bit different, I'd stand up for the person who's a bit different instinctively. I think it's okay for people to be gay. I think that's fine. Don't have a problem with it at all. Uh, some of the things that we're going to talk about tonight, maybe I've got more, like the medium stuff, I find more egregious than somebody having their own sexual choices. But yeah. Heal. That has been a story of my life. Right. Sorry, uh, what? My name means to heal. That has been a story of my life. Your name means to heal, and that's the story of your life. So what the fuck are you doing sitting on your brown armchair with your teddies behind you? In your vest. Why aren't you working at the doctor's? 
Um, my mum is Lynn. My dad is Robert. We come from a small working class town in the middle of Rochdale. 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 Is that the one famous for the pedo rings? Or is that Rotherham? You know, the famous Asian pedo rings. You know, like Manchester's got like the Curry Mile. And then the other one's got like the famous yeah, pedo rings. Couldn't be happier. And then Clinton Baptiste sent me some tippies. Thank you, Clinton Baptiste. Appreciated it. Appreciated it. That's your official appreciation coming out of me now, going into you. Um, I'm sensing that Willow the dog has a higher IQ than these two. <laughs> Oh God! You know, at least the, the dog will. Uh, <laughs> at least the dog will do what it's bloody well told. You can't imagine these two listening to anyone, can you? They seem to be going their own way. And we have been spiritualists within both branches of my family for the better part of five hundred years. If you five hundred years, on- five hundred years spiritual history here. You know, when you start a business, like I started a hairdressing shop, and I put up established two thousand and eight. Do you know what I mean? Established two thousand eight. What uh, Jason's got going for him is the established <laughs> 1500 psychic mediums. The records you can find my great grandmother being arrested for witchcraft. Uh, I'm a. <laughs> I know. But she was arrested at 40 <coughs> and she died at 113. Oh, wow! In 1700 months. Exactly. So something was wow. going on there, weren't there? Yeah, she was arrested for being a witch in 1700 and she survived the witch trials and lived to a ripe old age of 100 and something. So what was going on there? I'll tell you what was going on there is they were hunting witches and there weren't really lots of witches. Like it turned out there weren't really lots of witches and it turned out your nan wasn't even good enough to get burned at the stake, mate. <laughs> she wasn't even able to provide enough psychic evidence to be able to, for them to want to burn her at the stake. She, she got called up for the witchcraft trial and they did the trial and they said, not a witch don't bother burning her. So it turned out she was just a very ugly woman. <laughs> um, I have five cats, two dogs. My other half is called Theodore, so I am Jason in love with Faith. What? What? Okay, Theodore must be in Faith and you're in love with Faith, yeah. Um, so your other half is called Theodore, Simon, Alvin. Theod- okay, so you, what we learned about this guy is that in the past... His his great, 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 great grandmother was a witch and he's married to a fella called Theodore. This isn't the information we're looking for, Jason. Is this what your spirit guide's telling you to say? Any any more question than that, then? I don't know. It was the hardest question I had to read, I think. I was Was baffled by it. I don't... Ask your fucking spirit guide. Honestly, no anymore. What, Jason? It's just a bit of an introspection, really, isn't it? it? It's like... What what is it about me that people would find interesting? I don't know, Tony. I don't know. From the neck up, you seem quite normal, <laughs> but, but then you start to your eyes start to drift and things start to go wrong. I wish whoever's got the telly on would turn the fucking telly off in the background. But carry on, lads. You know, the only well, spirit yeah, the only spirit they've been near is the gin. <laughs> I've got very much over the last few years, sort of the things I used to think people would find interesting. <laughs> I just think it's all just stuff that happened, isn't it? Yeah. It used to- yeah, that's a good way to put it. You know what I like? I like it when you could sum up history by saying it's all just stuff that happened, isn't it? I'll tell you what, do any of you need the captions? I tried to put the captions on for my YouTube today. I couldn't find the setting for it. Someone asked the other day. I really am trying to look for the captions, but unfortunately my voice might not be captioned. Uh, I'm really looking to fix that issue, but I'll put these captions on for these chuffers if you want them as well. To be interesting to me, but now it's no longer interesting at all. <laughs> and I'm very open about myself. So I, I talk quite freely about. The guy on the left is definitely on grinder. The guy on the left has definitely put you, <laughs> put people through a grinder. <laughs> things that have happened in my life. <laughs> There's no libel or slander here. It's only a joke, Tony. And uh, yeah, I found that a lot since I started this spiritual journey. Really, that. Um, as part of giving comfort and giving of myself in demonstrations and things, you become very open about your own life. Mm. And things don't bother me. Talking about things like being a gay man, being a spiritualist, medium. Nothing wrong, with, bother- nothing wrong with being a gay man. Go out and paint the town 
future. I, I've got nothing against gay men. Not at all. Nothing against gay men. Being a spiritualist medium, on the other hand, reaching in with those lovely hands and touching people's lives. Not so sure about that myself. Don't mind if you really are a legit spiritual medium and you actually have a spirit guide and, you know, can provably, you know, I'm open to that. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it done yet. But I'm open to it. This guy, not so sure. Bother me anymore. You know, yeah. I'm quite open. If, if I find that if people have an issue, it's their problem and not mine. Where I used to take ownership of these things before and I don't well, anymore. You know, I... <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of... So fuck you, haters. I'm not taking ownership of any of those things anymore. Marsha P. Johnson, who was a, a gay no. uh, civil rights activist in America. Marsha P. And, Johnson. Um, her, the P in her name, she added herself. It means pay it no mind. Oh, wow. And it seems <laughs> to have become one of the defining words recently of, of my sort of... I talk so much about my life that I found a lot of what bothered me, what made me angry, what made me sad. Now they're just memories that I use to give comfort to people. Why can I see this particular memory? You know, and it might not be a good memory, but... You know, these bad memories that make me sad, and now I use them to give comfort to people. I've leveraged the things that have tore me apart inside and made me... <laughs> made, I don't use it to make give comfort to people or something, or do something to people, maybe. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's there to create the healing for the person who is working with me at that moment in time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the rest of, if anybody has an issue with anything that I say or that has gone <clears> on, <throat> I am very much, just pay it no mind. It's not really significant anymore. Not really significant anymore. Pay it no mind. So uh, that's a nice face, Tony. Uh, so what we're saying is that if people don't agree with us, fuck them basically. Fuck them. Doesn't matter. Um, it's an interesting aspect. You know, it's an interesting way to think and live. And that's what leads you into this position of painting your walls this colour, wearing these clothes. It's because you're not listening to anyone's advice. Fuck them. Oh, oh, Jason, if you're going on, if you're going on the, uh, the live on the internet, I think maybe you should, maybe you should wear a different vest today. Fuck you. Pay it no mind. Pay me my money. Um, in chat, I don't know if there is any connection between mediumship and homosexuality. I do think that there is some aspect of this role, being the medium, being a good medium, being a successful medium. If you're not psychically trained or in tune or don't have a spirit guide, then what you're probably doing is just making up a load of shit and just like facade and bl bluster, you know, lies, facade, bluster. There could be some people that are so psychologically damaged they believe they're hearing weird shit and are not, you know, and then there's this small sliver of people who may exist that could be real spiritualists. You know, time out, I'm, le I'm leaving that door open. These chuffers are not that. These are just chuffers who want a bit of money, a bit of glamour, a bit of something in their life. They're from, clearly, Jason just told us, he's from a working class background. He doesn't have these um, opportunities. He's not the star. He's not a singer. He's not a, you know, but he's got some fabulousness about him and he wants to be on the stage and he wants to be in front of people and command the audience, have people think he's better than them, have people think he knows something they don't. There's all of that going on, isn't there? So I think that if you were all of that and you're some scrunty 50-year-old who, like, you know, goes down the bookies and jerks off to uh, holes in the toilet door, then, uh, you know, you're not going to make it as a medium, are you? You're not going to get on stage and be like fabulous and doing the audience. I'll tell you another thing. These people, they are, the mediums, their their target market is like old ladies, isn't it, really? Because older ladies have lost a lot more people in their life. And their older ladies, maybe they're looking for people who aren't so smart. So for some reason, these characters seem to be appealing to those people in much the same way as some of your mainstream media comedians and entertainers you know uh, being gay is not the case that being gay makes you fabulous and you're going to go and be an entertainer <sighs> oh god i told you i'd mute that but and i don't know how this works you know maybe i'd have to talk to some friends who you know can educate me more it is it seems to be the case doesn't it that some uh, gay men have this personality that they can deliver this, you know, like drive the show and be on 
on in the front, a bit like me. Um, and this fabulousness helps them to be taken up and uh, viewed as a medium when they're pushing that. So I think that's part, part, partially what it is. Oh, you know, and family members, we've had conversations about things that have gone on. And, and because of that, I can sit with the strangest of people and just go, it's, it's none of my concern that. Did I tell you about giving a reading to a murderer? No. Yeah, I, <coughs> I, I gave a reading to a murderer and he, uh, I said that the man who you killed, you, his family have never had his body back. And they were like, and they never will. And he said, do you think bad of me? And I was like, I have no opinion on this subject at all. Really? You've got no opinion whatsoever about a man who murdered somebody and then refused to acknowledge where the body was for the love of the family. No opinion at all. That's a worry to me, Jason. That is a little bit of a worry. Have you met this murderer? What are you doing with this murderer? Am I to believe the things you say, Jason? Because I tell you what, you know, big waving red flag here is I don't even believe Jason. I don't even know that he's met a murderer. He might make a, me a multitude of rash claims and I'm to take him on face value, apparently. And that's good for me to be a normal person and to just believe what people say to me. Believe any old shit. You know, I, I met Charles Manson. I met fucking Marilyn Monroe. Oh, I fucking went on the moon. I've done this, I've done that. Have you though? Because, like, show, like, I don't know. But you're telling me I'm to believe it. In normal life, if someone said to you, like, you know, I, I had sausages for breakfast, you'd be like, oh, did you? Like, I've had vegan sausages. You could have had mine. But, in, in in these sort of extraordinary claims, I don't know. Okay, I don't know, but you know. My 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 job was it is Paul to the person. Who was it, Paul Hansel? <laughs> behind me, speaking to me at the moment, and not to you and how you feel. What? As to the person stood of opinion on this subject at all. My yeah. my my job is to the person stood behind me, speaking to me at the moment, and not to you and how you feel. He's, he alluded to something bad happening in his life earlier. I worry about people who have had like bad shit happening to them by people who have stood behind them talking to them while they can't look round. Don't look round here, you. Don't you look round. You know, I wonder what that does to your brain. But uh, this fucking, I don't know what he's on there. My spirit guide doesn't stand behind me talking to me. They've got the good grace to stand, you know, foot front front and centre. We can have a chat. I don't have to hide behind me. My spirit guide is not hiding behind me. And he was like, but you've just basically told me I committed murder. I was like, and you admitted to it. I didn't kill anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That, that. Um, <clears throat> part of, I mean, I am a Christian spiritualist. What? And part of that is um, forgiving the sin, but the sinner, but not the sin. I think you sound a little bit confused there, you chuffer. I don't know how to dig into that. You're a Christian. I mean, I'm not supposed to be doing Tony Swindles, really. I, I tell you what, I will not be doing Tony Swindles, no matter how much he asks me. Um, Tony Swindles. This man did solve a mystery. Yes, that's true. Um, thank you, Cameron. Thank you for saying that, I rock. Hopefully this is a bit more of a cheerful one today. Hopefully we can bring some, you know, some light into the world and a bit more cheer and just have a bit of a laugh at these chuffers. Because come on. Like, come on, though. Come on, Tony. Come on, though. Like if you won't admit it to me, if you're going to, uh, if Tony's watching this and thinking, oh, you fucking wanker, oh, you fucking wanker, oh, he's going in hard on me. Um, if Tony's thinking that, Tony, all right, after he's finished his little, after you've finished pulling your little pudding, Tony, we can have, like, listen, Tony, right, it's a load of bollocks. I know it, you know it, everyone knows it, load of bollocks, mate. And now you're going on, Jesus said that I'm going to be a psychic. Jesus wouldn't have had this. I mean, let's not get into whether the Bible's bollocks. That's another whole kettle of chuffers. But Jesus wouldn't have had this, would he? I don't remember it being in the Bible, the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. But if you do, you know, you can tell people about it afterwards through your spirit guide. Like, no, no, Jesus was against this sort of shit. <laughs> Um, could you do a red flag about Peter Volding? I could have a look at Peter Volding. I think Peter Volding's, a f I'll just tell you off the top, you know, I'll take your chat on board as it comes through. And um, Peter Volding, the problem Peter's got is that Peter's got a bit of an ego and a bit of money and a nice boat. And he wants to go out on the river with his technical equipment, tech equipment, and show off and go off on his boat. That's what Peter wants to do. And if he gets to do that, he gets on the news and he goes, oh, I'm Peter Folding. And then if he, because I don't know, he's, he, maybe in some ways he hasn't got as much control in his life in some areas as he wants or something. I don't know. But I, like, you know, without going too deep psychologically, Peter's got like some sort of chip on his shoulder about being the big one, the main one, super Peter, like savior Peter. And so 
that's all well and good in so far as it doesn't hurt anyone for him to have his problems with his ego. That's fine for him to have his problems with his ego. Let him get on with it. If he's going to go up and down the river and help the police, that's good. However, if you're the police, you're like, he's got a better boat than me, right? And it fucks me off. I have to get in in my fucking armbands and my goggles he's got this boat and it's got sonar he's got better stuff than us how come his coat is nicer and like you know he's got there you go he's got a huge mansion and a pad maybe i don't know like he seems like he's quite well off yeah so he likes spending his money and playing with his toys and having a bit of our la da i'm the big one about that yeah um, but also on the flip side peter is offering free uh something the police are not able to afford and it helps to find people and when it's a missing persons not a criminal case everyone's allowed to look so thank you, Peter. But of course, the police divers are like, fuck you, Peter. We're doing the job. You're coming along two weeks later. You're not allowed the official information. You're not part of the official investigation. You make it look like you're a copper and that you're attached to the coppers because it's up your own bum. But really, you're just a chuffer. So fuck off, Peter. Would you stop taking the limelight? And, you know, they don't like it because of their ego. The police have an ego problem with Peter. The problem there is grow up the both of you. Yeah. I don't care about Peter and his ego. I don't care about the police and their gripes. Find the missing people. So if Peter's there with his boat, thank you, Peter. We'll put two policemen on your boat to watch you and make sure that they're on the... You know, we can't have you finding anything, Peter, because you're an uno unofficial chuffer. We need a policeman on that boat to make... Or a woman, of course, police person, uh, on that boat to make sure that if something is found, we've got one of ours on the site one of ours on the team, someone to watch over you, Peter. But ultimately, go about your business if you want. We'll give you something to do. Thank you very much. In the same way as if volunteers turn up at the station and want to look for Nicola, go out in that field and find Comet then. Go on. Like, you know, it's helpful. And Peter gets his ego boost and all that. Oh, well, fuck it. You know, we can all see what a little man he is if he's so desperate to be on the news with his big coat. Like, Jesus. Like, it's obvious, isn't it? Like, we can all smell his ego. And so can the police, and that's where the butting of heads comes. And it's just ridiculous to be butting heads over ego when people are missing. That's what I think about Pete. There you go. I just did him then. You know, yes. so it, it's for you, not you personally, but it was for him to stand judgment for his actions, not for you to judge him. What? Yeah, yeah, that you was know. totally. That was exactly it. I mean, and there was, there was... I'll judge him. If you've done a fucking murder, guilty, guilty. If you're a fucking murderer, fuck off out the back, right? Round the back, you have your kick in, get you in the bin. Fuck off. If you're a murderer, I'll judge him. I don't care. Call me Judgy ju McJudgy son. Judgy Judgy McJudgy son. Oh, you judgmental bastard. He did a fucking murder. There's a particular family incident that I won't overly go into, but I no. dealt with that family member. And everybody was like, what? Well, how are you okay with that? I was like, oh, do you know what as well true in chat here absolutely true in chat um we've got someone saying that people don't uh where did it, it went past and it started to move ah i gotta keep up with it i got it. uh mama mama bear blue people don't understand the spiritual world that's true and this won't help them will it this stuff if you like spiritual world and you're into it and you believe in it and you're like down that road i'm not going to say oh you can't have your beliefs and it's bollocks i've got different beliefs we can talk about them i want to get these people on the show and maybe prove to me it's real we can talk about whether spirituality and stuff is real in general as a different show. I'm not here to make that. You know, people have done those conversations. I'm here to judge these chuffers, Mr. Judgy McJudgerson. Judgy, judging, you and your judging, you always judging. You should have a fucking judges wig, you. You should have one of those wigs with all the curls on it. One of the big wig, wiggy curls. You and your fucking judgy, judgy McJudge. Yeah, I'm the judge. I'm the jury. I'm sadly unable to provide the role of executioner here. But uh, yeah, I'll judge them. I'll judge them. And they're doing bad. If you believe in the psychic, they don't represent it well. You should dislike them. If you don't believe in it, look at them. You should dislike them. There's not many reasons to like Tony Swindles and Jason. Do not misunderstand me being okay with it and me dealing with it. You know, and I was like, it's not for me to stand in judgment of this person. It's for me to love this person and do what I can and don't love the murderers. Jesus might have done that. Turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheeks. <laughs> I'll smack your other, I'll clap your cheeks. Your cheeks. Anyway, look. To, G, G, I don't know what Jesus would have done. And to serve my family. But yeah, so that question is the most awkward question in the world because I also find while spirit picks us, I think, for our characters and what we can bring to the table, I think the more you work with them, the more you sort of find that you look at yourself in a sort of 
you look at yourself a little bit, a step back from yourself. Step up, mate. A step up from other people, you chuffer. That's what you do. You think you're special. Listen, if a spirit has got the ability to come over from the spirit world and to pick someone so that they can share the message and push things forward, whatever they want, yeah? They're going to pick you. And they're going to pick you. <laughs> they could have had fucking Kendall Jenner or like... <laughs> I'm trying to think of famous people. Who's really famous at the moment? Paul Ansel. No, look, look, look. They could have picked... Who are they going to pick? Who are they going to pick? You could have had Philip Schofield. You could have had Holly Willoughby. You pick this chuffer. And why? What has it got you? Your spirit has made a bad choice. I'm going to say that. Even if they exist, they've made a fucking awful choice. They've looked at you and they thought, this is the chuffer. This is the one. He's going straight to the top. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, like, I understand what you mean. You're right, you're right. Jesus did forgive murderers and rapists. Amen. You're right. That's true. He did. He did. I'll give you that. You know, Jesus, peace be upon him. God rest his soul. Uh, it was a bit of a nice chuffer. Uh, me, on the other hand, thankfully, I'm not the son of God, so I don't have to adhere to those strict, strict ideas, and I can say murderers and rapists can fuck right off. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know... Uh, it's just one of those things um, he did find another person in the lake a few years back hopefully this is going to come up in this chat if you're going to go to react somebody <laughs> well, it, well, it makes me worry though if you found more than one person in a lake it makes me worry about your track record of knowing people are in water that does worry me yeah yeah like, I understand what you mean if you're going to go to react somebody else sort of says to you like why are you going to react like that and you go well alright I get it you know you, yeah you get, when I scream at somebody and suddenly you will fucking get it mate old ladies whispering in your ear going is this really a good plan and you're like, <laughs> yeah you might want to rethink that you <laughs> know yeah yeah and so yeah. You, you look at things and when things upset oh, you oh you know what it reminds me of you know what it reminds me of do you know what this reminds me of I can't do a lot of it because uh, um, I bet it'll be cop copyright but I'll show you a little bit Limmy parasite. um there's not a lot of it here, so I'll just pick one of these and hopefully this will be uh, um, not copyright and we'll be able to get away with it. Honey is a little ah! bit in the... Yeah, it's your chuffers. You free advert on my channel there, you chuffers. I'm not getting paid nothing about. Okay, so that's Libby doing the psychic. It reminds me of that. You know, it totally reminds me of Parasite. But that's got to be done for the copyright straight off. Oh, man. What that means is, if it comes up later, when, you know, when this episode's up live later on, uh, I might have to go up and ask YouTube to, to cut, cut that bit. So only you got to see that, you live chuffers. Everyone else is going to be like, why is it suddenly jump? But I might have to cut that bit out. Thanks, YouTube. It's fair use, you know. I am talking about the chuffing stuff. Ask yourself. And I've got a lot, you know, got... I know it's very early, but I've got a lot of sad memories, but they don't make me sad anymore. Now I just sort of push into them and be like, what did I learn there that, or what have I not learned yet from that? Exactly. A little bit of a red flag on the serious side. He's referring to these sad memories and he's like alluding to them. And what he's alluding to is like, you know, being beaten as a child or having some horrible things done to him as a child. I don't really want to say all the words because I say the words, I don't give a fuck. And then YouTube comes back to me like, hey, you know, the advertisers don't like this. You know, you'd recently got monetized and you thought this was going to be a big boon in your life. Well, we're not giving you any money, so fuck you. Like, about 80% of my back catalogue is not monetizable. So I've got to watch it. You know, I can't say things like, you know, sex abuse. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't. This is what they would have done to him, isn't it? This is what they would have done to him. Anyway. Exactly. Everything's a learning experience, isn't it? He it, certainly it, learned a lot, didn't he? <laughs> you learn from that event. And then I find as a, a medium, as a, as a spiritual person, you can pass all that. You're a large. Up and say that was part of what I had to go through to be who I am now. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I am making a joke there about child essay. So, you know, this is today's comedy section. Stand up, my, my stand up material about child sex abuse. <laughs> that won't go down well, will it? Unlike the children who seem to go down far. Anyway, look. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Paul, that's, that's an interesting one. Um, we've just had a question from- Obviously it's terrible. We've got to laugh though, yeah? We've got to laugh at these chuffers. Paul Smith. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, CLAI, CLAI. Thank you for the super chat. Listen, if anyone's offended by any of my jokes, they're just jokes. Okay, I'm not going around diddling kids. Not like the, I didn't say these chuffers were. Not like the, but you know, I'm not. I'm not doing the Jimmy Savile on you. Jimmy Savile was Jimmy Savile funny. Now I think about it, he wasn't really a comedian, was he? He wasn't known for being a comedian. What was he really known for? 
Oh yeah, being a monster, but being a monster more than a comedian. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, there is an answer to that question, and I can answer. Sorry, what was the question? Could mediums or spiritual help find that young boy's body? What Brady refused to disclose the location of, says Paul Smith. Paul Smith from Leeds says, could mediums or spiritual help find that young boy's body what Brady refused to close, disclose the, dis the location of? Uh, uh, there is an answer to that question and I can answer it, but... Uh... Get your finger out of your mouth, Tony. Tony, what are you doing? You're on camera. Tony. Tony. I... Yeah, yeah. I... I think Jason's not very good at asking, answering questions, is he? Like, Jason, the first question was, who are you? And he was like, well, I, uh, ooh, ah, ooh, I don't know. Although, my name's Jason, but when I was a kid, I didn't have a very nice time. And, uh, ooh, I don't know. And then he's like, can you find this body in the, you know, that, that this murder has done? And he's like, ooh, well, there is an answer, but I'm not going to fucking tell you. Maybe send me three quid on the PayPal and I'll let you know. You know. that comes down to... Hey, 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 Squirrel Sniper. I'm not having the spell casting, remember? Remember Squirrel Sniper. I don't have the spell casting. They tried to tell a prayer at the start. I skipped it on. But remember, I don't have the spell casting. I'm not a big believer in that, am I? Because otherwise, with all the words that get said, I mean, you'd be fucking reading Harry Potter and your hat would be flying off. Like, we say words all the time and if they made up magic spells, some people would accidentally be popping magic out. It's not happening. Certainly not with these two. The only thing that's Popping out of their mouth. Anyway. Um, from, I've forgotten, uh, this is dreadful, I've forgotten the name of the young gentleman we're talking, Keith You can't have forgotten him. Ask your spirit guide, you fucking knob. It's, it's about what he perceives would be the benefit of that for his family. Um, yeah. it, it's what, what purpose would finding that body now serve. He's telling us, right, that the spirit has told him that he don't want his body found. His family aren't going to want that. Um, and Anyone it, here been to yoga? <clears throat> You've got no business going to yoga. I find a lot of things, like it's one of my mantras, actually. Spirit will give us what we need, not necessarily what we want. Yeah, which is why spirit didn't give you a fucking great big house <laughs> and loads of money, but instead gave you an a online interview with Jason from Rotherham. <laughs> um, this is what you need, mate. Spirit gave you locking up. That's what you need. <laughs> in terms of the boy's family, would it have just made things worse for them finding the body? Mm. Or, or, or I know I can see where people would say, but they would have had closure and they yeah. would have, you know, it, it would have maybe give them some healing. But it's, it's not a controversial question, Paul, at all. It's just a question. and it... Yeah, fuck, fuck you, Paul, for asking your question. It's not controversial. It's just a question. So, you know, wind your neck in, Paul. Who is Paul in chat, man? Now, you can't see their chat. It's, you know, it's the re live replay was turned off. But Paul's in chat asking questions. It's kind of funny, isn't it, considering today? I, I hope it wasn't... I hope it wasn't... That for me is the answer. It is spirit would look at the whole situation and think, what what are the benefits of this? Couldn't spirit just ask like a higher up spirit? Couldn't spirit ask like you know? Couldn't spirit? <laughs> so spirit spirits looked into this and said, "Fuck it, I don't want my body to be found. There's no benefit to it." <laughs> That's actually quite handy, isn't it? If you don't know where the body's found, so. And um, for some reason, they and their infinite wisdom thought. Best, best not. So there's your answer. Well, I don't know. Um, over the course of my time as being a spiritualist or a medium, I have been involved in that situation, a situation like that, four times. Um, the first time was to a young boy who died in a river in Preston. And his family contacted me. <laughs> Wait, 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 right. You know, I didn't make any facial expression change when he said that. In my brain, I thought, well, that's a bit sad, isn't it? Someone dying in the river. Like, I'm trying to keep it light today, but that's a bit sad. But I, what I like about Tony Swindles, right, and this is classic, this is, is he heard it and he thought, well, this is, I need to pull a face here. Going to need to be pulling a face to show everyone that I didn't like that. I'm, I'm feeling bad about those poor people in the dead in the river. Going to feel, <laughs> feel going to need to put a face. Watch his face. The first time was to a young boy 
who... Dad, young boy, young boy, no expression change, young boy. Died in a river in Preston. Died in a river in Preston. And his family... Oh, oh. Oh, that's... That's annoying, isn't it? Oh. The fucking batteries have run out on the remote again. Oh. I've only got half a bowl of Cocoa Pops out of the damn cereal box. And there's no more Cocoa Pops. Oh. Oh, that boy died in the river. Oh. Really winds you up, doesn't it? They contacted me. And, I mean, I won't give his name because it, it's not polite. And no, 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 no. No, no, and then we'd be able to verifiably check whether you were accurately correct in your statements. Better not to give any names. Better just to speak in complete vagaries that can't be checked. <laughs> <coughs> me and his family are very, very good friends now. And, um, and we did man manage to find his body very clearly. Look, it's actually worrying me that you've been involved in four murders. <laughs> like, that's actually really worrying me. You may, you're able to easily find this body. I don't know whose it was, you won't tell us. But that's a red flag, isn't it? It's not like I'm going to go and give this guy £20 and ask him to speak to my nan. Like, tell me, you know, if she hid any money behind the sofa or anything, because none of us have been able to find anything, for Christ's sake. It wasn't all just shoveling shit for years for nothing, was it? <laughs> God bless you, nan. God bless you. Um, <laughs> I'm saying that, like, when we had COVID, we had nan come and move into our house. I used to be a bit of a media producer, a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a one. And then uh, things were going a bit badly in my life anyway. And then COVID hit. And I had to move all the kit that I'm sat around now. I'm sat in front of a computer and all this. This had to go out of this room. In the, out in the back and Nan had to come in this room and have a bed and stuff and I had to become a carer so I know a little bit about it but um, like after she's gone she hasn't thought to if there's anything she wanted to say to me she'd have bloody well told me while she was alive she told me to fuck she, she used to tell me you don't half go on that's what she used to say to me you don't half go on if she was going to tell me anything she'd tell me just shut up <laughs> they contacted me two days later this body was found and it was on its way to a mortuary and you know, his family have him back. Um, that happened purely because the spirit of that boy wanted to come back. I mean, yeah. I was like, it's, it's impossible, this. What you've asked me is impossible. And I walked past a mirror and there was someone stood in the mirror. That's you. That's you. It's. And I was like, oh, you look very wet. You look very wet. That's a sign. When your spirit... When you see your spirits, if they died in the water, they'll be quite wet when you see them. Quite quite wet. That's a sign. And uh, I phoned them back and we had this conversation and then he told me how it would happen. Well, hang on, that's confusing. You phoned them back, you had a conversation, he told you how it would happen. I don't know who's he and who you're phoning. You're certainly not on the spirit phone, are you? <laughs> You're, you're, you're phoning them up now. Send them a text. Listen, my spirit guide's busy, but if I just drop them an email, they might get back to me on Wednesday. <laughs> Two of the other times, a, a lady came to speak with me and I told her her son would be back within the month. And she said, will he be back alive or dead? And I'm like, well, he unfortunately has passed to the word of spirit. This is, again, this actually makes me angry inside a little bit, even though I'm trying to keep this light. You shouldn't tell people that their missing loved ones are dead if you're not really sure and you're making it up. But, you know, if you're 100% sure and your spirit guides are completely infallible, then maybe. But what an awful thing. He did find Michael Brooks four years ago in the river. Um, that's true. That's true, apparently. Like, you know, we'll see. We'll listen. I'm open-minded. Um, but... What would worry me here, <laughs> Lev Kung Fu, Shaolin, I love Shaolin Kung Fu. And what would worry me here, right, is that if this guy's finding multiple bodies, right, I don't know if we should be giving him a medal and, and giving him a TV show on, like Jeremy Kyle. Right? In fact, I think the other thing might be appropriate is that we should maybe be pulling in for questioning him. Questioning? Maybe keep an eye on the chuffer. <laughs> him and his teddies. Is that it? Ooh! I just realised I was criticising those teddies behind him. Maybe they're not teddies. Maybe they're not even really there. Maybe we've all got a bit of a spiritualist in us. And those that's his spirit panda and that's his spirit bear. And this other guy has got a spirit cupboard and a load of spirit dog leads, it seems. But he will be back. And she said, well, can you tell me where he is? And I said, no, because if you interfere with what is happening... No, no, because if you uh, if you uh, uh, interfere with the um, the psychic energies, then uh, I can't. Uh, so, like, are these people paying you? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, I'd want my money back. <laughs> you're supposed to you're supposed to at least answer the fucking questions, even if you are making it up, mate. He won't come back. 
you know, they won't come back if you tell things are in motion upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't say your wishes, otherwise they won't come true. So it's your fault you didn't get what you wanted, you fuckers. You spoiled the spirit world. They heard you. They know what you're thinking. They've seen you in the bathroom with your little videos. They know what you're doing. To make this arrive when it needs <coughs> to. Do. And and the same with the other one, the the lady who we spoke. Who I spoke. He's touching his nose now. He's got his hand in his ear. What's going on with him? I'm, I'm, he's causing me to do it. I'm I'm picking my nose now. We've all got a hand in an orifice. We've all got a finger in a pie. Spoke to she's from St Helens. We. Uh, yeah, yeah. To make this arrive when it needs <coughs> to. Do. And and the same with the other one, the the lady who we spoke who I spoke to. She's from St Helens. We, me and my mum helped in this that particular one and we found him and he was found where we'd said and he is now at rest the the fourth one there is it is impossible i have no idea why but he said his mom helped him i mean i don't want to red flag that last one too much i wanted to let him talk a bit but i'm worrying now that him and his mom are out there murdering people the fourth person i was asked to look for we we found a place and when we went to this place it was impossible to reach a body in that place. It was just like, whoever put that there, put it there to make sure you could never find it. And if you yeah. did find it, you'd need to be talking to the person to find it. Which That's creepy as fuck. Conveniently, you know, mediums are able yeah. to do. You were able to speak to the person who was killed and know where their body is. That's your statement. If the police arrive and you're there with the body, you're going to say, don't worry, I found them because I talked to them and I knew where they were. And they're going to say, oh, don't worry then. That's fine. I've got, a, I've got, a, I'm starting to get actually angry with this now. I thought this was all going to be fun and games for me, but this has actually made me angry. I don't know what he's going to say. I haven't pre-watched this. Why has he not been arrested? Immediately. Let everyone in chat here now, you turn upon the scene. There's a call coming from the, the, the public. Nicola's body has been seen, or something has been seen in the river. You're in the police van. You're on the way down there. You know, oh, this is going to be bad. I don't like that. You know, couldn't we have got the fucking, couldn't we have got the standing up, like there's two of them, we've got to stand up the road and close off the road. We've got to go down there and get in the fucking water and deal with this now. Who drew the short straw here? And then you get there and this chuff is there and he's like, oh, I spoke to Nicola just a couple of days ago on, on my spirit phone. And she told me she was going to be down here in the river. So I came down and had a look and there she is. And you'd be like, right, get in the back of the van. Hey. He's like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dodgy. You know, I've done loads of these murders. I mean, investigations into the murders. I, I found loads of bodies. Like, okay, okay, that's fine. I, I hope somebody's recording what he's saying because we're going to take that down and use it as evidence against you. Like, do you know what I mean? I will tell you a little story, right? I tell, it's always fun. It's Tony's falling asleep. Sorry, well, let's get a better pause on Tony there. Let's have a little better pause on Tony. Um, the, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see you getting on in chat. I'm glad to see everything's going on in chat, all right? You know, and bear in mind, I'm making lots of jokes, but I love everyone, really. You know, on a one-to-one -one basis, people can be great. Like, individuals that are chuffers, no, I'm not, not happy with. But do you know what I mean? I'm not going to be like, oh, this person's wearing a funny T-shirt. I don't like the way they've done their nails. I'm not going to like them. I, t I used to run a hairdressing salon. Everyone come and sit down and have their hair done. I've got no no worries with you. Um... <laughs> it threw me off, off my train of thought then as well now. Oh, it threw me off the train of thought. Yeah, you put him in the van, you take him down the station, you know, you ask him a few questions, don't you, these chuffers? You certainly fucking don't just be like, thanks very much for the help. <laughs> it was down a 200 foot well shaft that goes down into a mine and we sort of stood there like, if you went down there, you were never coming back. But it can yeah. be done. It's almost like he has the same sort of frame of mind as someone who was trying to dispose of a body, isn't it? It's almost like he's thinking, instead of listening to his spirit guide there, he told us, his spirit guide didn't tell us, if you go down the well, you're not coming back. We stood there and thought, if you go down the well, you're not coming back. So that was our guess. The question is whether the word of spirit wants it to be done. And what is the benefit? Like, to, to the young boy who couldn't be found, I don't think it would really have served any purpose anyway. No, no. Apart from to, and this sounds awful, but apart from to cause trouble, the, the the trouble that would have been caused by that boy's... Stop touching your nose, Tony. Finding would have just been not worth it. Yeah. It was involved in a gangland killing. Oh, and it was kind of like, anyone who finds out a young man is going to get shot. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, 
Bless. Are you telling us through the, the lines that you did know where they were, but you were unwilling to reveal that information because it would be dangerous and you could get shot? Is that what your psychic spirit guide said? Psychic spirit guide now is a gangland. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm getting a message from me psychic. Listen, blood. <laughs> Listen, blood. Don't you fucking go down there and get that kid out of the fucking well, blood. They'll fuck you up, blood. <laughs> I'm getting a message from me spirit guide. Listen, blood. <laughs> They'll fuck you up, blood. Stay well away from that fucking bin, lot. <laughs> <laughs> me spirit guide's particularly aggressive today. <laughs> okay. Just to move on a little bit. Um, school life. I always find it interesting talking to spiritual mediums about the school life because... Mediums about the school life. He's looking down now. I wonder what he's doing. He's got his phone. I'll tell you what it is. He sent him the questions in advance, like I do to people that I interview, because I do want them to be prepared and to not feel hoodwinked. Send them the message in advance. He's now on his phone. He's looking at his prepared answer. He's got a bit of writing he's done about this. He's ready to... He's going to... We're going to hear something that Jason's pre-prepared about his school life. It, I don't know about you, but mine was quite... Not traumatic, but difficult. I didn't had a, have many friends. A, a difficult school life, so I was yeah. just wondering what yours was. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I got on with my teachers very well. Uh, I find quite naturally that um, mediums are usually quite uh, well schooled. Like I think we're quite clever. Not to blow our own trumpets, but I think we're relatively quite clever people. Yeah, better than other people, aren't you? Better than other people, aren't you, Jason? You're not just like the normal fucking grunters that you live with, that you go around with. You're not like the fucking grunters on the estate. Like at my estate pub, like I call it an estate pub, you know what I mean? Like It's like the pub in Shameless, my pub up the road. And don't get me wrong, I was an installation in there for a good few years. I decided to give up drinking. I actually gave it up, knocked it on the head. Uh, but I used to, in my hairdressing salon, I'm quite a posh chuffer I was, like in the middle of the town, you know, the ladies coming in, doing the hair, quite a nice, quite a smart chuffer. But I can also go in the local estate pub and hang out with me own. <laughs> Drink myself to death all night, end up on the wall outside smoking a spliff with the fucking owner coming out and smell, I can smell that, fuck off. Get back inside your chuffer, I'm paying your fucking wages with me fucking beer money. Like, you know, I, I know where I know where I come from. I'm all right up the Brighton Arms in Birmingham before the games. I'm fine, you know. But uh, this chuffer, different from other people, special, cleverer than other people. Because he's a medium spirit guide, it, it's probably easier. I'll tell you what, it is easier in school, isn't it? Because they can just whisper the fucking answers to you. You don't have to revise when your spirit guide was actually there in history. You know, oh, I'm channeling Napoleon for the... I'm channeling Napoleon for my French exam. <laughs> Ooh la la. Zut alors. Alors. What did Napoleon say to his men before they got in the boats? Alors. C'est l'heure. <laughs> alors. C'est l'heure. That means to the water it is the hour in French. Um, yeah, yeah. And we always see... I think what did Hitler say to his men before they got in the tanks? Men, get into the tanks! <laughs> we always find fascination in things, so I was always fascinated to learn um, everything. I loved learning history. Um, as for friends and what have you, being a, I think being a gay man in the 1990s in the very early part of... Actually, I do feel for him in this. I do feel for him in this because uh, I was growing up in the same sort of time and it was commonplace to call people homophobic slurs as a common parlance in language. Like, not that my friends or anything were actually gay, but you go, oh, you're gay, stupid, that's gay. And you'd use the F slur that you're not even allowed to say online anymore. You know, I can say it because I'm English, I smoke fags. I smoke fags, but you call people fags and you get banned off the internet now. But back when I was growing up, it was just a common word that people bandied around. Like, you know, if you fail to, like, the ball's coming in and you're supposed to hammer it into the back of the net and instead you f slip up and you spoon it over the top of the building. Ah, oh, you F word, you know, just used to go around. Uh, and I, I live in a much better world now where we don't use homophobic slurs and, and damage people's psyche as they're growing. Because, like, in my class at school, there would have been one or two people who were gay and scared to say it, afraid of it, because the common environment that we're in was was like so negative. So like I said, we can all have a joke and a laugh about, you know, cocks in your mouth or whatever, but ultimately it's it's fine to be who you are. And it is difficult to grow up in a, in, it doesn't matter what's inside you, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you like heavy metal or whether you like, you know, 
panda teddy bears over your shoulder. Like, you should be... Not the panda. Anyway, look. the uh, Not the panda. Not, not the panda. Um, the uh, It's telling me that you've been a naughty boy. <laughs> Pandy's telling me you've been a naughty boy. Anyway, look. Um, it isn't on, is it? It isn't on that uh, you should live in a world where people use something that's internal to your character that's just who you are and turn it into a fucking huge horrible negative around you so you can't even speak for yourself that wouldn't have been nice i get that i think that's fair enough that wouldn't have been nice and you know what back then i was the sort of kid that had long hair liked the music uh, i did go through my rave scene days i did go to raves and stuff as well but i like the long hair like the rock music i could paint my nails a funny color black or whatever you know you know, like, I could do that. And then people would bully me. Oh, you look fucking gay. You're fucking gay. And I would rather stand on the side of those being bullied and say, yeah, fuck it. Right, I'll be gay then. Like, I'm not gay, but you're all going to bully people for being gay. I'll stand in their corner because I'd rather fight the bullies than be a bully. So that was always, like, the way I felt about that. Uh, so that would have been difficult. I, you know, I'm giving him a lot of shit today. I'm ripping him today. But that's, that's a fair point that he's had to grow up in that environment. And it's been tough and it was possibly a lot better for me than it may have been like from yourself and Michael when yeah, to yeah. school but yeah uh, and, and also I mean look at the difference in your I'm sure Tony had a, a more difficult job getting a boyfriend because fucking look at him <laughs> sorry Tony that's ad hominem ad hominem I shouldn't I, that's, that, I shouldn't attack you for being for looking like you do but <laughs> that, that is unfair I just I just think Jason's a little bit more attractive Jason if you're listening you know, you're a little bit of a hottie, aren't you? You're a little bit of a hottie, you're in your vest. Oh, Pandy's telling me you've been a good boy. It was still <clears> not <throat> very nice. It was still quite hard. Like, yeah. you, you get that awful thing, don't you, where if you make friends with girls, it's because they want a gay best friend and every man in every class seems to think that the only reason you want to talk to him is because you want to sleep with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think, have you looked in a mirror this morning? <laughs> yeah. Do you know me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pause here for a second as well. It's brought up something. Uh, I had friends who were gay when I was growing up and I didn't want to think they were sleeping, wanting to sleep with me or anything like that. It was fine. I, I didn't make that happen to other people. I didn't make people feel like that. And uh, I went to hairdressing college, for Christ's sake, at one point in my 20s. And there was this lad there, God rest his soul, Tony. He was called Tony. And Tony had a real chip on his shoulder about me. Like, he had a real chip on his shoulder. Like, at one point, he was like, these girls are my friends and don't think you're going to take my friends off me. And I'm like, Tony, I'm here to learn hairdressing. I don't give a fuck about talking to these girls. They're like 16 and 17. Like, let them get on with my little pony and fucking going on about, uh, take that, and I'll get on with doing hair and running a business in my free time, thanks, because I'm here to learn a trade and, like, I'm actually working in the industry at the same time. Uh, but Tony had a real chip on his shoulder. He was a real, he was a real one. He was. But I loved him all the same. Even though, right, get this, even though Tony was mean to me and, like, nasty, like literally, like, mean to me, like, I'd be, I'd be like, you're right, you know, do you want one of my sweets or something? You're like, I don't want to eat your fucking sweets. Stay away from me. Like, Tony was mean to me. Um, he felt very insecure about the whole deal with me being in the classroom in some way. But, uh, and he died in a car accident, very tragic. But at the same time, I always gave him the time, you know, I always nice to him because I actually loved him and his character and the way he was even though I didn't get the good part of it even though he didn't give me the good part uh, yeah interesting it's just brought that thought up so rest in peace Tony <laughs> yeah. but um, that, yeah and there was, and there was a lot of um, there was a lot of bullying but and a lot of that sort of kept to myself and away from my family because I didn't want them to think that I wasn't okay you know yeah. That's important. Yeah, you should always I... talk about these things. You should always talk about these things. You know, your feelings, who you are. It's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. It's a funny one. And because I, you, you, did you, I don't know about yourself, but I found in school. Yo, Scott, you train at Johan's Forts in Mayfair. No. <laughs> I wish I'd trained in Mayfair. That sounds posh. No. I didn't do that. Uh, I, I'm not going to start like revealing loads and loads of personal information on the internet now that things are blowing up a bit on the channel. However, like you know, I am a real person who used to run a real business, so it's not like I can hide. But uh, why you'd want to know where I went to school and what I was doing is beyond me. But no, I didn't. Uh, I I don't know who Joe Hansworth is. Um, the, tan the panda teddy is freaky, isn't it? Yeah, his panda eyes got those got those raccoon eyes going. The panda eyes. Um, I hope everything's good in chat today. You know, I'm making jokes and I'm trying to put
push it along. And uh, these guys are the characters that they are. So, you know, this is what's coming up. I hope no one thinks that it's like a horrible homophobic rant or anything like that. I hope I've made the balance clear here and let's push on. Um, apart from wanting to learn and enjoy getting on really well with my teachers, and I got on better with my teachers than I did my own class. Like, I talked to them. I'll tell you what, though. If anyone is thinking in chat, well, hang on, what about these, like, you know, what's going on with JK Rowling and these things? I would like to do some episodes on that. I would, because I think there's a borderline where, you know, everyone's free to be themselves, except when you're pretending to be something you're not, so you can do bad sex crimes. That's not good. But then how do you police people's thoughts? It's a whole different episode. In yeah, a better yeah. way. Um, was that the, the gay question was the question of of the time like it was the only question anybody ever wanted to know so if you when you say at the beginning of this you know like what's important about jason um or what do i want people to know at school it was the only thing people wanted to know yeah yeah Which, <laughs> I, that time, a lot. I didn't even know what that well was yet <laughs> I worry about that because gay, gay people I know, like I meet them, they are gay. It goes without saying sometimes because they are so fabulously gay. And then we just get on with it. And sometimes it comes up in conversation. You know, sometimes um, things come up in conversation. We talk about them. But really, all the gay people I think of in my life, it's not about them being gay. It's about them being people and they're wonderful, interesting people. So I think I worry that Jason wasn't seen to have a complete personality. Maybe because he doesn't have a complete personality. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. It was strange. I was trying to figure it out myself, and people were like, "But you, you gay?" And I'm like, "What's this got to know that? What's this got to do with psychics and mediums?" <laughs> but there we are. Is that a thing? I, I don't know. You couldn't your psychic medium? Couldn't your psychic spirit guide have told you? Listen, kid. <laughs> Listen, kid. You quite like sucking willies. Go on, give it a try. You'll love it. You'll fucking love it. Suck a little willy. Go on, have a little suck of a willy. You'll love that. I know all about you, kid. I'm your psychic spirit guide. Why don't you spirit guide guide you? <laughs> or were you not psychically spiritually guided back then? It would seem that you'd have an advantage over other people and you wouldn't be confused. You know, I remember, like, seeing a Westlife calendar back when Westlife were young, thinking, oh, they're a bit of all right, but... Hello, uh, Lee Jag. First time seeing your channel. Love the vibe. I'm trying to maintain a good vibe here. I'm trying definitely not to be some sort of horrible, you know, um, homophobic person. So I, I've explained it clearly now enough times. I don't feel like that in my heart. But at the same time, we've got to have a laugh about everyone, haven't we? And we certainly got to have a, have a laugh about these chuffers. So uh, we're having a good laugh today. Yeah, I hope it all goes down well today. It's it's just how it is. I didn't understand what that was or what it meant. And, when and they brought else... it here. I haven't gone on about them being gay. They've gone on about them being gay. So now I'm having to deal with it. He's asking you to answer a question that you didn't even know was a question. It's, it's quite yeah. complicated, isn't it? It is. It is. It's not that well, complicated. That nice. Either you like sucking cocks or you don't. Move on. Nice. <laughs> Not good singers, though, from what I heard last night. Okay, what have we got here? Paul Smith said, not good singers, though, Tony. What I heard last night, though, Tony. <laughs> Highlighted comment on Facebook there. Paul said, not good singers, though, Tony. From what I heard last night, though, Tony. So Tony's been raising his voice in the night and Paul has been listening to it. This is Paul Smith from Leeds, not Paul Ansel from... Okay. <laughs> but I did a dem last night on StreamYard and, and they ended up making me sing. Oh, uh, and, and it it's not good. It's not good, Jason. Oh. No, so, mine is not pleasant. Can we talk about psychic no. mediums now? I sound but like Vera Lynn. You sound like Vera I Lynn. don't even sound. Yeah, fucking look like it. That good? I sound like... She could be talking to you for all you know. I like Gracie Fields. <laughs> oh, um, oh. <laughs> so if you had a TARDIS and you could go back, what advice would you give to the 12-year-old Jason? I'd just go back and rip <laughs> Don't, don't get me started. I'd just go back and fucking do him behind the bike sheds. Have that, you little fucker. <laughs> Put him on you. I'm you. Yeah, well. <laughs> Causing me own problems now, aren't I? <laughs> Sorry. Katie Stromberg sent me to peace. That was probably the worst joke I've ever done, maybe. But it is a joke, isn't it? It is a joke. So, you know, it's all right if um, telling it as it is, lovely. Um, it is a joke, and uh, it is... Thank you. Uh, imagine... Um, What's-his-face did it? Uh, who's that one on the, the telly? 
You know, that, that one on the telly. Uh, Jimmy Carr. If Jimmy Carr said that, you'd be all right. So, um, spirit guide joke. These are spirit guide jokes. If you could go back and see your 12-year-old self, what would you tell them? Uh, the lottery numbers, the results of sporting events. Do you know what I would do to my 12-year-old self? I'd probably just like try and support them as much as possible. Give them the 10 bag of weed and say, shush. And I, I don't know. There's probably not much you can do, is there? There's not much intervention you can do at that point. 12-year-old's a bit of a funny age for that, actually. I've thought about this question quite a lot. Yeah. And it makes me quite emotional. Um, I think the very simple answer is none. Nothing, yeah. Nothing you can do. I would not tell him anything. Wouldn't you? No. The spirit guides can do that. There is... Stop touching your face all the time. Tony... I, I look at a picture of myself and I ask myself that question, what would I do if I could go back and stop him? And stop him? And it makes me what quite the fuck? If I could go back and stop him. Go back and stop him? Do you mean stop someone that's done something to you? Sad, don't like it. Feel for you there. Making jokes. You're making weird illusions. I'm making jokes. But if something serious has happened to you, don't, you know, that's serious. Not, not, you know, that, that's sad. If you mean go back and stop yourself, what are you stopping yourself from doing? That's a huge red flag. Bit weird. I look at a picture of myself and I ask myself that question, what would I do if I could go back and stop him? Mm. And it makes me quite emotional because when you say, for example, you pick 12, I know what will happen at 13, which is my auntie will die. Right. And then... Uh, and then at, it's okay, though, because she maintains contact with you after her death, presumably. At 14, my grandfather will die. Really sad. Really sad. Everyone deals with tragedy in life. We all have to deal with it. We all have to face it head on. We're having a bit of a laugh today, but they're bringing up this shit. And uh, they're quite traumatic events. If you're going to have traumatic events that surround death, I'm going to be a little bit serious for a, moment, for a moment, and then become, like, some... Sometime after that, you end up becoming a professional talks to the dead people person. Maybe just the one and the other and the two and this, maybe. Over the course of those next sort of eight years, yeah, the person that was that, Jason, is about to go through an awful time. I've got my finger on my mouth. And I really wouldn't want to spoil it for him. Oh, bless. Is this positive chuffing? Not sure why you've got these two on. You surprised me today. Poor guys, this was two years ago. Well, Lorna, I'll tell you what. I found this on the internet. This is them. They've done it on the internet. This guy's found Nicola Bully. Bully. I found him. I'm reviewing his character by listening to them talk. And I'm not exactly 100% down with what I'm hearing and seeing. So is it positive? I don't know. It's a bit of a laugh. It's a bit of a laugh. We can't all be like murder and gloom every day. So I don't know. I, if it's not, if you don't like this one so much, I won't always be talking about these two. But I will be, I've got, even if we don't get through it all today, I think there's more on Jason Dean Rothwell that I can bring up. Um, I'm sure more will come out. Like, he's a very strange character. And yeah, we can't please everyone. I'm sorry. I, 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 you know, I don't want to be too mean about them and stuff like, too mean to them. I get it. Um, talking about interviews as well, actually. Uh, I've contacted two people this week to interview and one of them has said they may be, which is Curtis Media, the Nicola Bully Case channel. Uh, I've contacted them, sent them the questions. If they want to come on, they might come on. And uh, the other one was the uh, Camden Against Violence. They haven't replied to me. So um, this is what we've got. This is what you've got. Eat it or, or throw it. Eat it or you get nothing. You go to bed hungry. <laughs> it was just like, you know, it's going to be great. It has taken a bit of a weird, tragic edge. That goes back to what we said earlier about it's those things that sort of join the dots, if you like, and make us who we are now. So you've got to go through it, even though it's not good. Yeah. It, it shapes you and it gives you the tools to, to move forward. I think the only thing I would do is I would go to him at 12 I'd go, I even know exactly when I would go to him. I would go to him in November, the year of me turning 12. And Very I would specific. say to him, just be brave. Keep going, mm. be brave. This is not going to be easy. But I would say to him, on the opposite side of that, you will it's fall in love, you will have a home, and, and you will be given one of the greatest gifts that any person can have. Psychic, psychic powers. Uh, 
Thank you very much for my tippies here coming in. Tippies, keep up the great work. Loving the content. Thanks. 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 I appreciate it. I really do. Uh... And that should be all right. No matter what comes in the middle, just head for that goal and you'll keep, be all right. Keep that in, in, in sight and you'll be fine. And without being overly romantic, I would say to them, there is a person called Theodore at the end and his name means faith. Have faith in the person. Oh, I'm, really, I'm really glad that you've got you know, a, a, a nice partner with whom you're you're happy that's that's lovely get there because everything else that everything else was just like a don't rain on my parade it was awful <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just like you think it's bad now and it gets worse than it <laughs> different ideas in chat here slightly different ideas in chat um you know uh dylan's right here we've we found out so far just from listening to him talk that he's found four dead bodies he's testified to finding four dead bodies uh, which no, none of us in our lives I don't think have been, you know, close to f finding four. I think that's quite quite a strange one. And Dean says he's the kind of guy that takes a cucumber and condoms to the Tilling Home Bargains. So we've got different kinds of ideas in chat there. Yeah. Oh, bless you. Bless you. So. I'm not against homosexuality. I'm quite happy for it. These two are chuffers. And if they were like, Whatever kind of chuffers they are, I'm going to have them on it. Like, they're chuffers, man. They're pretend fake mediums or pretend fake psychics. One of them's involved in several murders in somehow and has recently raised his head in the Nicola Bully case. All How a bit did creepy. you realise you were able to communicate with those that's gone be that have gone before? Um, I think because I've been very, 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 very lucky. Um, my mum was always very open to spirit. My great grandma um, was a spiritualist. My nana, who is like the biggest influence on me, was uh, massively into spirits and ghosts and things like that. So it was never, ever, ever put on me that horrible word imagination. Like my mum said that there was a little babe. There was a story where my my auntie she lost her son. That's um, sad. He died of cot death. That's tragic. And my mum my, my made it quite plain and made no secrets about the fact that she spoke with that little boy in the morning. I couldn't be happier. That's a little bit scary. Um, Lorna, thank you for the tippies there. I've got tippies out of the coffee.com system, which is, for me, the better system because it gives me more of a cut of the money. So thank you. But we can also do super chats now. We've got that on board as well. So if you want to be uh, highlighted above everyone else, you can go on the top of the chat. You can have your super chat. Great material. Okay, so we're all happy with this, actually, really. It's okay for what we're doing. Some people aren't quite happy with it, but I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I mean, it is, isn't it? You've got to look on the bright side of life. You've got to be able to have a laugh at yourself. And, you know, if your mum's been going on about talking to dead babies since you were a child, then, you know, you might have to just take it on board that everyone can hear weird voices. The morning that he died, she said there was a, a bright blue light. It's getting really dark in places, though, this is. I thought, what I thought was that we were going to have a chat with Jason and he was going to tell us about his gift. But instead, it's getting like, his whole life has been like a series of ordeals and darknesses. Like the sort of stuff that would really screw you up. In the living room and or on the edge of the kitchen door. And he said that it was him and that, he said, you know, I'm going on to Lynn. I need you to look after my mum. And As a baby, he said that before he learned to talk, obviously. Oh, bless. So, and then there was, you know, there was talk of, I know this sounds balmy, but my mum always talks about the leprechauns in the bedroom on the street. So I'm a little bit worried about your mum now, mate. Talking about the leprechauns in the bedroom. She used to live. Oh, wow. So, and yeah. I mean, my mum's not a go on, go on, go on then, Tony. Go on then, Tony. What's that face, Tony? Tony's like, oh, wow, leprechauns. So he can't say <laughs> fucking bollocks. Like, this is his guest. He's got to agree to it. And we get a beautiful shot here. We get a beautiful shot here as Jason just moves to the side. He's covered over the panda now. He's covered over the uh, the teddy and revealed, hidden behind him, the uh, his actual spirit guide, I assume. Cheeky monkey. <laughs> yeah. 
Cheeky, you're a cheeky monkey. Oh, it's my spirit guide. He's whispering in me ear. Oh, cheeky monkey, stop trying to bite. Oh, the cheeky monkey's come back from the dead and he's trying to grab you. Oh, he loves you. It's like Rod Hull and Emu if Emu was like a zombie bird back from the <laughs> corpse bird. Oh, Emu's whispering in me dear ear from the dark side. <laughs> There's cheeky monkey. <laughs> Nutty, you know, it's very strange because my mum sort of abandoned spirit, the idea of spirits when her sister died. It just right. was like, no, there's no such thing. Um, wow. But it's very lucky. So we used to play games with people like, I can tell you what's in your pocket. And I'm like, <laughs> can you do that? I'm like, I just know you've got a blue stone in your left pocket. And they're like, shut up. And I was like, I even knew who gave it you. Like, you're telling me that your spirit guide is a dead baby... And they are telling you in your head that they know what you've got in your pocket. And to me, the layperson, I'm to go, ooh, you've got secret knowledge from the other side. I should believe in you. <laughs> this is better than the telly, apparently. I should believe in you. You've got cucumbers in chat there now. I'm not, oh, I don't want to become a cucumber meme channel. Where's Capital K when you need him? One of my ardent supporters, one of the people that I love the most in this world, out of all the people I've met on the internet, is uh, fabulous. And I, I'm, I'm sure he'll quite happily <laughs> confess his homosexuality. He certainly has in chat a few times. You guys would love it. And if you ever see him in chat dropping the, uh, the shock bombs, then just take it in and accept it. That's what he'd tell you to do. <laughs> I love people, all different people, unless they're fucking weird, bad murderer people, in which case I don't. It's about whether you're good in your heart. It's not about whether you like sucking cocks or not. You can suck as many cocks as you want, as far as I'm concerned. Don't mind. But if you're taking the advice of a dead baby that can speak to you in your head after your family's had traumatic events and told you that the spirits were real, and then your mom's turned around and said, no, bollocks, they're not, and you've had deaths in the family, and someone's maybe done something to you at the age of 12, and it's all come out in this... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This guy needs therapy. Right, doesn't he, though? Excuse me. Spirit guy told me to blow my nose. This guy needs... I mean, I'm not... I mean, I'm not being... That's not even a joke, is it? That guy... Like, this guy could be a case study. <laughs> and it, so we just had it as a game. It was just, the spirit was up. And me and my mum used to play a game. We used to put our hands together. And she used to say to me, tell me what I'm thinking. <laughs> and Which is basically a very basic psychic gift, you know, to is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. each other's energies. And But did you know what she was thinking or not? Or was she just blagging you? Like, how do we know? And we used to, um, yeah. And it eventually... How can I call it BS? This dude looks a bit funny, but he found two missing people. Well, right, okay, well, we'll get to that, I suppose. Two for certain, I suppose, we'll get to it. I'm just judging, I, before we get to what they've done, like I've seen in the news, I'm just meeting them for the first time. This is my first impressions of Jason. He's talking, I'm telling you what I feel about his character. And it's fucking like red flag, red flag. Red. It's not red flag like Paul Ansel, where we're having like a serious, oh, he bonked her on the head and popped her in the river. It's not that. It's like this other thing where like, fucking hell, mate. You've been on a roller coaster. I'm surprised he hasn't got like a, a, an addiction of some sort because people that go through this sort of shit in life, like all of us have had troubles, but some of us had more than others and I feel for them, you know, but this is the way he's handling it, all right? <laughs> but at the same time, he's on the internet doing this, preying on vulnerable people saying, oh, I can tell you about your dead relatives. Can I have a fiver? Maybe a tenner. Get me a little bottle of Asti from the, the Dillons. Buy me 20 silk cut and an Asti from the Dillons and I'll... I'll tell you all about I'll tell you all about it. Dead people started talking. I mean... And again, if he's found dead people, I'm less likely to believe that he's got spirits telling him where they are. I'm more likely to believe he's involved in the fucking crimes. The final part of moving from being Jason <laughs> to being a spirit... 20 silk curtains and some poppers. <laughs> ...medium was a little bit rocky because... Do you remember when you used to do poppers on the bus? Do you remember? Don't tell me you didn't. Come on, come on. Do you remember we've all done that? Sat on the back of the bus doing poppers before you could do the proper hard drugs, before you, before you were able to get on the streets and do the hard drugs on the back of the bus doing poppers. We've all done that, mate. 
Moving on the back of the bus doing poppers. I started getting this very weird lady appear in my mind. and <laughs> she... When I ran my hairdressing, this is probably one of the most irresponsible things I've done, but when I ran my hairdressing salon, I gave one of the younger girls a bottle of poppers once. It's like, like a, a, a initiation. Like they're grown up enough. They're like 16, 17, these girls. Like, you know, they're like grown up enough. And she don't do, and I was like, it's not really drugs. Don't worry. I told her about what, you know, we had this conversation. I was like, oh, we've done poppers on the back of the bus. And so I had to get a bottle of poppers for the fuckers and like sniff that. And they were like, Wee. that was probably one of the most irresponsible things I've ever done but um, it, it happened can't say it didn't happen uh, Dale J and five, 5 Minute Films has dropped me the pound thank you very much that's nice dropping me a, dropping me a pound feels nice to be supported by 5 Minute Films I recognise that name is it from our own chat or is it I recognise you further I don't recognise 5 Minute Films I think it's from our chat is it and Dale J is weeping thank you for the five pound super chat you get to go up there on the, the board of shame at the top there you're paying for me to say these things. It's now your fault. You're complicit. <laughs> Kept sort of pushing me. And I, I ended up going to the psychiatrist and I was like, I'm going bar me. I'm Good. going mad. Yeah. I need drugs. Lots and lots of hardcore drugs. God. And he was like, do you think you have a drink problem? I'm like, right now I think I do have a massive drink problem. And My spirit like, guy told me. What would you say about that problem? I, was I like, told I you. I don't drink enough to make this lady be quiet. <laughs> my, my, they're getting <laughs> off the pound lad. I'll tell you what, Corey, these two are a couple of pound shop mediums, aren't they? That's what these two are. <laughs> I'm off the pound lad to spend that. <laughs> Cheer up, kids. We're off the pound land. You can each share 50p. Oh, gosh. And, uh, and then I went to see a healer and, um, I just burst out crying and suddenly I got, the lady became much clearer um, when I could see her and I decided to go to a spiritualist church. But Ooh. Some people really believe in this shit and if you do and you've got a good spiritualist who you think is 100% bang on and can be proven and all that, I'm not critiquing you, that's your beliefs, yeah? For me and these chuffers, I think the decision to go to a spiritualist church when you were hearing voices and seeing things at the point where you were having alcohol problems, dealing with the problems in your life that have caused you mental anguish. Serious note there. Don't go spiritual church. Stick to the... Oh. Oh. My spirit guide's telling me that could have been a mistake. You could have done both. But certainly, I'll tell you something, if anyone's out there listening to this, if you are listening to this and you are thinking about spiritualism and you have these issues going on in your own life, I mean this now, I'm, I'm honest here, I'm, I, you know, honestly worried about people, is uh, secure your mental health first. Finish with the drinking. Get balanced. Like maybe spirituality in, in a quiet sense, not in a speaking to the dead sense, but in a sort of quiet sense, okay. Uh, getting out in the world, meeting people, uh going to those therapy sessions, engaging with them, doing the work, uh, you know, getting on an even keel and then deciding how spiritual you feel. That's probably the way to go. Just Gone Viral's dropped me a fiver. Loving the content. Glad to bring the band to that's about That's what it's about, isn't it? We have to... I'm going to do some serious episodes and I'm going to do some fun episodes. And there's going to be a bit of variety on my channel. And I'm going to introduce you to interesting people all along the way. And if we can't laugh at them, then who can we laugh at? Because look at them. <laughs> you say when... When did I first? And I don't think I've ever, ever not. Because it was yeah. never been a thing to not believe that there were spirits in the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. They've always been around. The man through the window and stuff. The man know, through like the window now. Oh, my God. That wasn't spirits. That was your uncle. Too. That was your uncle. We had him for that. <laughs> We had him for that. He was pissed up on the way back from the pub every Friday. The man through the window. We had to start locking your window. We had him for that. The man through the window. <laughs> They've always been around. And this guy, Tony, the spirits have always been around. That's an easy one, isn't it? Because there's fucking millions of dead people. Like, here's a question. How come your spirit guide isn't drowned out by the fucking hundreds of people talking at the same time? Why isn't that happening? There's like uh, Japanese, Chinese, like culture goes back longer than ours, I think, doesn't it? Like hundreds of thousands of millennials. You, like you got the, you got what about cave people? I could hear my spirit guide ugging away in the background. They've been there for a long time. 
There'd be a whole load of them, fucking millions of them. Be, after the war, there'd be loads of Jews and Europeans and Germans as well. We killed a fucking load of them, didn't we? You know, they'd all be talking different languages. It'd be a nightmare. It just, they'd all be, it'd be a cacophony. A cacophony. Maybe Nicola jumped in the river to get away from this cunt. <laughs> if he was, I'll tell you what, if you were in the pub and you sat down with Jason Dean Roth, because I sit down in the pub sometimes if it's busy with people I don't know that well and I don't care. I'm like, you're right, mate, how's it going? You know, and I get to know them. That's how you, like, I know everyone from my bin man to my, like, mainly the bin men. It's mainly the bin men, to be honest, that I go drinking with. But I know them. Like, no, I mean, honestly, I go in the pub, I don't judge anyone, like, you know, not not being funny, like, you know, everyone's equal to me. We're all in the pub, yeah? So, like, I take everyone as they come. So I'm happy. You know, I'd sit down with Jason, and I'd be like, right, Jason, what's going on with you today? And he'd start talking this shit. Who's that on the right? Angela, the man on the right is the man that found Nicola Bully. The man that found Nicola Bully. And I wanted to get a, a read on his character. I wanted to get a feel for him. And this is an interview he did talking about his life a couple of years ago. The man through the window and stuff. You know, like when you're laid in bed and there's like, oh my God, there's some... And it wasn't just Nicola Bully he found. He found spiritual magic when he was a kid after he was abused, I think, although he wouldn't state it outright. Then he found alcoholism and drugs. Then he found the spiritual church and eventually spiritualism. And once he'd found spiritualism and talking to the dead people, then he was able to find four further dead people. Apparently, he's told us, I can't verify it, including one we can verify, a Nicola Bully. So his connection with the dead is a very real world one. My worry is that he might be killing people. <laughs> and he's got that pandy, and he's got that teddy, and he's got cheeky monkey. On Saturday, and you're like six. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you do with that? Why do the ghosts come through the fucking window? Ghosts aren't limited to the window. Spirits don't need to come through the window. It's through the ceiling, under the floor, around the corner, just in the window. Not, 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 can you let me in? <laughs> I forgot me chuffing, you know, ghost card, get me through the, I forgot me ghost card, I can't come through the, can you, not, 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 can you let me in? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, his haircut. From... I hadn't spotted that actually in chat there. I can't, I'll tell you what, your looks, how you're born, how you look, I can't really give you shit on that. That's just who you are. I'm not going to give anyone shit on that. We all look different. There's one for everyone out there. There's certainly one for these two. Uh, but your haircut, that's a choice. This guy as well on the left, his choice to do all this glamorous makeup on his hands and not follow through from neck up to have this short grey hair and the like standard... You know, he looks like a normal chuffer. And then from the neck down, it's all gone fucking mental. Like, that's a choice, you're right. He's gone for this swept over... It's disguising his balding pate. And then he's gone for long hair in the back. I've got long hair in the back as well. I'm, I'm pateable bald. My paint will bold. It's only fair I can say it. I'm a hairdresser. I know about these things. He's gone for a bit of a strange hairdo, though, hasn't he? Yeah. He has. He's gone for a bit of a snazzy hairdo. Sue Jow. Um. Uh, Helen says she's gifted and she gets the piss taken out of her all the time until she gets the message to pass on, and then it's a different story. Like I say, Helen, these people are giving you a bad name then. I'll take everyone as they, as they come. I'll be open minded. I don't believe in it myself. Yeah, I think in the main, it's people trying to rip people and steal their money and, oh, I can talk to your dead loved ones and you need help and I'm going to offer you some empty promises and stuff. like. You know, in the main, that's what I feel. In future episodes, we can really investigate it. We can get people on from both sides of that debate and they can talk about it. And I can learn something, you can teach me something. I'm happy with that. These two are giving you a bad name, though. If you're a real medium, these two are potentially giving you a bad name because I get a funny... I get the idea that these two might not be the most legit spiritual healers. Uh, someone in chat, in their chat has said, can I ask you a question for when you've done, please? You both believe in reincarnation. So the question is, uh, the question is, do you believe in reincarnation? Okay. Do you believe in reincarnation? That's a huge question, actually. Well, it... Do you want to go first? Me. Well, I sort of think that we are here to learn and have a human experience and to learn what it is to be human. And when we 
have learned what we need to in this life and you move into the world of spirit, you still have things to learn. And right. That's very vague, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad you've got it sorted because I don't know the meaning of life. I'd like to at some point find a nice lady, maybe a marriage, have a children or two, nice little house, don't need to be a millionaire, don't need to have a mansion, send them to a nice school, make sure they're good chuffers, you know, bring them up right, see my job as being done there, take uh, solace and joy in the things in life that I can take solace and joy in and, you know, shuffle off this mortal coil like everyone else. I'm glad this guy's got it sorted though, he knows what it's about. I think sometimes the only way certain people can learn more is to maybe have another physical experience. So, I Hello, I worry about that. You want what? You want to do what to me now? You want to be, do what to me now? You want to teach me about spirituality, Tony, by having another physical experience? Listen, Tony, the last physical experience was enough. I don't think I learned anything about spirituality, frankly, and it took ages to clean that goo off your carpet. I think it is possible for a spirit to be reborn and have another earthly existence. Right. But... Recycling them now. Why is your spirit guide hanging around with you then? Why don't they just get reborn and hang out as a real chuffer? Why is your spirit guide not bothering? That's just an opinion because I've, I've never actually spoken to anybody who... Had, from spirit who has had more than one earthly experience. But mm. I do know people do have past life regressions and things. So. You're saying you're getting scout leader vibes. Man, if this is my scout leader, I would have no badges. <laughs> oh, I suppose I'd have one. I'd have the uh, holding your breath underwater. I'd have that. Wouldn't I? <laughs> I'd have a sewing badge. Stitch that up, you little bugger. <laughs> Shut up, you. Stitch that up, you little bugger. Like I said, it's just an informed guess from me, really. Over to Jason. <laughs> Over to Jason. Um, when I was at university, I read the Egyptian Book of Life. What the fucking universities had you in? Aren't they supposed to screen people out? <laughs> like, <laughs> when I was at university and I did my first mur I did my first um, semester of of, 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 of of when I found my first body. <laughs> and it says that the soul is split into seven pieces. Oh. Um, one of these pieces is your spirit, your personal self, and one of them is your divine self. And in terms of reincarnation, I believe that, and only I believe, in my opinion, because like Tony, until I die and get reincarnated, I don't exactly. I have no idea. Um, in chat there, some important points there. Yeah, if you have got a spiritual code of ethics amongst mediums, then this guy's proven not to follow them because he's given people some very funny words. Yeah, and uh, he does seem like a bit of a nutter. Um, but in my opinion... Thank you for the new subscribers as well. Sheffield Wednesday fan there, the owls. Bit of the owl, the owls. Sheffield Wednesday, the owls. Uh, I remember back in the day when Sheffield Wednesday and Sheffield United were both at the top of the old Premier League. I remember back in those days. You know, when there was a bit of a battle for supremacy amongst those clubs. We need to get those days back, don't we? Um, I really appreciate the subscribers. You know, if you're watching this and you're enjoying it, please, yeah, throw me a sub. If you think you know someone who might enjoy this, send it over to them on their phone. You know, let, let's get this ball rolling. There will always be in spirit a person who has your name. You will always be you. And when you yourself die, you will die. How did they get my name? Like, how did I always have my name if... I didn't get named till I was born. Like, did my mom get told to call me this name? What about people who changed their name? And you will stay in spirit forever. But I believe a piece... <laughs> Dean says, if I was Paul and innocent, I'd be questioning these two weirdos. I mean, for Christ's sake, Jason, like Jason's out there finding bodies and has managed to evade police capture. <laughs> ...of your soul um, goes back to a sort of a collective, like a beehive. Your spirit is part of a beehive. Got it. And um. when you go back, what you then do is your soul reincarnates as another life. But I think you walk through those lives together. I think, you know, you have, when you say, oh, I've been here before, or, or you see something that really sparks an emotional response. Yeah. I mean, some people say you can tell what um, incarnations you've had by sort of like weird ornaments and objects in your house. like you I can tell what kind of uh, animals people have been in a previous life. I can. 
I could tell what kind of animals people have been before. Uh, Tony's been a blobfish in a previous life. Uh, Jason, I'm getting... I want to say rodent vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say rat. I don't want to say rat. Nothing as aggressive as a rat. Nothing as uh, aggressive as rat. I'm getting rodent vibes. <laughs> panda. Could have been a panda, although pandas are notorious for not having sex, aren't they? So I don't think that's the case. I think, I think he's definitely getting his end away somewhere. I, wouldn't want to, I think he'd wash that panda. Ask yourself, why is that there? Squirrel. <laughs> Squirrel. Check out these nuts. You know when finding things in the you know squirrels find turns out we always when i was a kid they taught us that squirrels bury their nuts in the wind they find them in the winter my granddad used to teach me that you say you know squirrels they bury their nuts and you find them in the, they find them in the winter and it turns out years later that they've done some studies and squirrels just bury fucking loads of nuts loads it's like a scattergun approach like they just keep, they, they bury them everywhere and so when it gets to winter they just dig them up like they don't know where they are they're just digging around they're not that smart. It's a fucking squirrel, mate. No reason to be interested in it. Like, you just yeah. pick up a statue or an ornament and you think, oh, I really like that. And then you put it in your house and it's like, it goes with absolutely nothing. <laughs> maybe he likes bears. Maybe he likes grizzly crime. Who's I still haven't watched them, so I'm not making any... I, I haven't watched them, so I don't know. I'm just bringing it up. Yeah, it's just random. Yeah, and someone's like, why did you buy that? And you're like, I don't know. It just spoke to me. And somebody said to me, that is when somebody from the lives you have lived before as part of your soul group or your soul stream right. has inflected upon you and said, oh, go on, I used to have one of those. <laughs> and, and you buy it and, and it's their way of pushing yourself through. And it's So just, spiritual shopping now, spiritual shopping. <laughs> dark as, and not thought about it like that, but if I challenge... My spirit guides must have smoked fucking loads of dope because that's everybody. all they want, that's all they ever want me to buy. <laughs> if he was watching this, if you sit in your house unless you're like a really like minimalist <laughs> you'll struggle with this. yeah well my, my spirit guide had exactly that butt plug <laughs> if you do sort of have ornaments and stuff just look around what fits into a common genre yeah and then look at how many different genres there are overlaying each other so do you so i think my spirit guide must have been swedish because i bought a lot of stuff from ikea have like japanese things african things egypt uh sue saying about the post-mortems interesting sue i did pick up uh your you know, I try and keep up with the comments. There's a lot coming on the chat. Keep putting them on chat in the videos afterwards. Keep putting your comments on. I do keep up with them. I keep keep looking at them. Um, the autopsy should have been quicker, shouldn't it? It should have happened during the office hours and it takes place on a certain day um, and it doesn't take 24 full hours. Yeah, uh, interesting stuff. Um, things, etc. And then ask yourself why you got them in the first place. <laughs> the man is covered in ectoplasm. And where your interest in it actually comes from. Ooh, I'm going to... Ghost bust. I'm going to bust. Busting makes me feel good. And you'll find <coughs> usually it doesn't come from anywhere. You just suddenly like, oh, I really like that. You know. Mm. Oh, I so really like that. You. I like his voice in a way. I mean, I mean, keep imitating him, but I kind of like his voice in a way. But you will come back, but you will always be you, even if you have a different face. <laughs> Yo, that sounds awful. Put that on a T-shirt. You'll always be you, even if you have a different face. <laughs> Say that while you're sharpening the kitchen knives. You'll always be you, even if you have a different face. <laughs> and a totally different personality. Same and as you, still though. Be it's still you, even if you've got a different face and now a different personality as well. So it's still you, though. <laughs> and you'll be what is it that makes you you, then? The vest, presumably. The nice, the snazzy vest. You're alive at the same time, in my opinion. It's a very weird one. Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> Actually, I figured it out. He's saying Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> Schrodinger's cat. It's got nothing to do with Schrodinger's cat, you chuffer. I've got Schrodinger's USB stick. I have Schrodinger's USB stick. It doesn't matter which way you stick it in, it's the wrong way up. Um, the uh, <laughs> the thing I'm getting from Jason, I'm getting... I've got it now. I've got it. It's it's um, it's very ocean vibes. It's, it's ocean vibes. One of them on the left may be a bit of a jellyfish. The one on the right... This is previous life. These are animals in a previous life. I'm not being mean. This is my spirit guide telling me. Previous in previous life. I'm getting uh, ocean vibes. I'm getting lamprey. I'm getting... Um, the tritivore. 
detrit my spirit guide is saying detritivore, which is a posh word for eats the shit off the bottom bottom feeder. Yes, it is. It's very much. Uh, Kieran's retracted a message. You don't have to retract messages in here. However, you know, horrible stuff will get you binned off. We've got. If people in chat start complaining, I will then moderate it. But overall, it's a very open chat here. Um, although we're we're okay to have jokes, but we're not okay to be like homophobic or or mean to each other or any of those other things that you know go in that spectrum. But o overall, we're all right to have jokes at these people's expense because they're out there in the world doing things at other people's expense. Although he's done a good thing, Jason, by finding Nikki. So. You are dead, you are alive, but you are not alive, you are not dead either. It's like... Yeah, exactly. Stacey's follow-up is, is deja vu then, maybe a past life memory. It could be, Stacey, but what I found sometimes... Well, if you're not a neuroscientist, you might just answer out of your ass here, but I could tell you... I could tell you that deja vu is the experience when your brain, for some reason, like, you know, your brain's a bit like a computer, very vague here, because I'm not a neuroscientist, but they believe that it's a bit like a computer. It might have a little quick reset, a little quick reboot, and you're not really paying attention, but you get the same piece of information fed through to your brain twice. Like right now, your brain is constructing all of this, isn't it? Your brain is making it all up. Like you're hearing things, but they're not things. They're just vibrations. They're uh, changes in the air pressure and you're seeing things but they're not things they're just waves of light and they're entering into your eye through the cornea and that's going through a, an optic nerve into your brain which constructs a picture for you in your brain like your brain does it all and if your brain says oh i've seen that just then that's because you just saw it and you just did played it twice for me it's like a stutter in the record like a, just a little malfunction like maybe you, you could call it a glitch in the matrix but uh yeah that's what neuroscientists might say let's see what tony swindles famous medium thinks it is says um if i go to somewhere and i think i know this place and i know that and i've never been here before in my life um sometimes i find it's um spirit connecting with me and That's it's handy. their recognition i've got mm -hmm. rather than my own if that makes sense it's like That's them handy. saying oh yeah if you go down here and turn left you'll find a lovely little sweet shop which has happened to me before um, so I think it's a combination. I, I think it's a combination, déjà vu. <clears throat> the only thing I, I can take déjà in my understanding of déjà vu, and I mean, a weird thing about déjà vu, and just say this before I tell you, my understanding is scientists cannot find out why it happens. Really? Really? Hang on. Déjà vu. Scientists. Um, can science explain deja vu? Most of us have experienced it. Uh, brain short circuit. Uh, could be a memory phenomenon. Scientists have tried to effectively recreate it in a lab. Uh, there are dozens of theories. So it's not that scientists can't explain it. It's that there are multiple different theories and they're vying for contention. So they've got multiple ways of explaining it. It's not that they can't. It's not that they can't. Uh, they, it's that we haven't decided which one we are going to go with yet, I suppose. Um, I think I'd say that. I think I'd say that. The other thing I'd ask is, why aren't your spirit guides telling you what deja vu is? At the moment, we've got through half an hour of your fucking interview, and none of you have brought up your spirit guides. Like, you're talking, oh, I've got spirit guides out of me, arsehole, mate. Me and my spirit guides. Oh, I sat on the loo the other day, and I couldn't have a shit for spirit guides. Like, no. Where are they? Why haven't you introduced them? Why aren't they doing any talking? Why haven't your spirit guide said, oh, Jason's spirit guide, I used to know them when I used to be down the fucking doing whatever I used to do in the history of the past. No, we're not talking to them. Why aren't the spirit guides quite important and for up the front here? Why aren't they important and up the front? These two give mediums a bad name. They give fucking smalls a bad name and larges a bad name too. And just say this before I tell you, my understanding <laughs> is scientists cannot find out why it happens. Like, yeah. they have no idea what causes it. They have and some ideas. Yeah, every human on Earth experiences it. I just Googled it. I personally think deja vu is when you cross um, a, a sort of blip go on, go on. in time. Into the spirit world. It, it triggers a crossover where you would... Because in my opinion, and it's only in my opinion, there yeah. are thousands of worlds all the exact same world and oh. you were doing the exact same thing, but some are in the future and some are in the past. What? That's kind of out 
side of the remit of spirituality that now we're talking multi-world theory sean carroll of course if you watch your podcasts you'll know about sean carroll me i'm single single and ready to mingle yeah absolutely you know there's not a girl that that's been able to put up with me for more than a couple of years <laughs> single and ready to mingle um yes i am and the reason at the moment i'm single is because i'm trying to drive my life forward after covid and i don't think i've got room i mean I, in the future i would love and i you know i'm looking forward to one day meeting someone lovely and having a family and all that but at the moment if i try to do a relationship at the same time as trying to um stabilize after because covid was a knock you know knock back to square one smack you on your ass wasn't it so uh i need to push on with my um, I feel like I need to push on with my career a little bit at the moment, stabilise, and then I'm ready to date again. But yeah, yeah, I am single, yeah. Um, I'm looking for a woman that's smart enough to look after a child and stupid enough to let me get them pregnant. <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to... Uh, I really want to be a dad at one point. That's something I'd like, one of my ambitions, I suppose. So yeah. Um, how old am I? Um, if I'm going to be honest, which I have to be, because, you know, I have to be. And I don't want to be. I want to say I'm in my late 30s, but I have to say I'm in my early 40s. I'm 40. 40. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a fucking number. You can still wear your hat backwards. Just leave me alone. Right, look, some are in the future somewhere and some are in the past. This is a worry to me about these many worlds theories because, like, you could be on multiple time. Oh, this is an idea I've had as well. You know, if we're on multi, you know, everyone goes, oh, you go back in time, you could kill Hitler and we could have a different timeline. Multi world timelines, yeah? If that's the case, we're in the shit world. We're in the shit world. They did shoot JFK. Hitler did get in power. It wasn't so great that we won the war. It was so bad that Hitler got in the power in the first place. They We're in the shit world. Coldplay are a big band. They have been on tour. Ed Sheeran is one of the biggest selling artists of our generation. We are in the shit world. <laughs> Laying them out now. Come at me now. Give Ed Sheeran a jab. He couldn't see it coming. His eyes looking over there. Give, give Ed Sheeran a jab. Coldplay can you imagine going to a music festival and Coldplay come on the main stage and you have to listen to that fucker playing his piano dreary dreary old BS Coldplay we are in the shit world <laughs> I'm taking one for the team here there's another version of me sat on some beach somewhere loving it lapping it up England won the World Cup we all had a great time oh it was a great time me on over here I'm taking one for the team so that they can be happy I hope they re I hope they appreciate it. Some are a few hours into the future, some a few hours back, some of them dozens of years. And I think sometimes when you have deja vu, it's when those worlds pass through each other. The problem is with the TikTok generation, if you say you're 40, that's it, fucked. That's me done. Unsubscribe. I'm getting old enough to be my dad. Like, come on. You know, I need to at least pretend to be young. I'm on the internet, don't I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, all the worlds pass through know, each other. I've, been, yeah. I've done this before. It could be that. And it's like, yes, you have. You literally have. It's just two worlds have just hit each other at a similar moment in time. And Fabulous. it might be fabulous you, i mean because don't you ever have you never have you with ever, all of the other variations in the world that could possibly happen, with every other possible variation of, of world that there could possibly be, you happen to be in the same place at the same time as another it's a bit of a reach, isn't it? It is a bit of a reach. I've read it where you, you've noticed you've got deja vu. <laughs> Sorry, acoustic, the end of acoustic gymnastics is taking it to a, a, a bit of an extreme there. Like I said, I'm quite happy to have a joke. These people are this personality, so I'm happy to riff off it. But at the same time, uh, there is a bit of a limit. Uh, I don't think we could say he would pure get bummed into next Friday, <laughs> necessarily. But you did, and you did, so it's okay. Let's just not go too far down that road. You certainly wouldn't want to go too far down any road with these two wasn't good and you kind of think at what point did this situation go bad yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you think i know I somebody's about to break. yeah yeah i know i'm about to have a domestic i can see the domestic coming i've seen this memory before how do we stop the and then they come in screaming and you're like no 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 obviously there's no way to Got change it. <laughs> yeah off we go that sounded dark as well. They keep like it's supposed to be a light-hearted conversation about Dean Rothwell and his, uh, you know, his history with mediumship and his spirituality. And what it is is it's him unburdening himself of all his childhood trauma and uh, giving us excuses and reasons why he should turn out like such a fucking like. It's all right if you're a bit this and a bit that, but like no one will act. I will not have it. 
I will not have it. In fact, I feel like I should. I've got a few people who I'm thinking of who are like really like fabulous. I, I know a person, right? I, if if they're ever out there and they're listening to this, Isaac, Isaac Lee is a fucking like upper echelon of elite in my mind. Isaac Lee, he's funny. He's kind. He's powerful. He's beautiful. Um, yeah, if 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 he's ever hearing me say this, he's someone I used to work with. Like, I don't really see him much anymore, but I'd get him on the show. I'd have him in, and he would lay into these chuffers. He would rip them a new one. And that's um, nice. I think it's just a loop in time. Fabulous. I like that as well. You like everything he says, don't you? Um, Tony, we can sort of skip sick of fun. number five because you've already talked about the effect your abilities have had on you. All right. We're going to skip the effect your abilities have had on you. We're going to skip that. That seemed like the one I'd like to hear about. But go oh, on. Uh, what effect does communicating with spirit have on you? What effect? You can talk about it if you want. Gets me hard. <laughs> they're all whispering all this sexy. It gets me hard. I, on, say that. Say I that. think the very simple thing about that is it makes me feel better. It makes you feel yeah. better. It makes me feel bloody awful, but we shouldn't say bloody. But you can say it's not a, not a service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes sometimes it's not pleasant at all. But the more often than not, <clears throat> it's like. It's like a lovely little drug, isn't it? Just a sort of drip feed of diamorphine. I, I felt a little bit bad last night because there was myself, Jean and Irene doing a, um, an online service. And this lovely young man was coming through to Irene and I could sense him as well. And he, he, he had a lot he wanted to say, but we couldn't actually find anybody to, to take the information. Now, whether it was because they didn't want to to put something in the comments. And that made me feel bad because I thought we've not done him justice. We've not yeah. made that link for him, but I know it will come and we will find. So if you're trying to sell your mediumship online and you've had a, uh, a medium spiritual event and it's gone badly and you've not made that link, what I would probably suggest, Tony, is don't bring it up in the middle of this. Don't like bring up your own inabilities to be a proper medium. Don't don't tell the world that you're failing. Him yeah. and we will find the recipient for his message but that made me yeah. feel bad well i mean i i i look i do like those messages you know where you just you think i i love the messages or the readings where at the end of their reading you say to somebody is there anything more you want to ask and they just go no i think you've literally covered everything you <laughs> no i'd just like to leave please now thank you and you're like love that Yes. Nice. Do you feel like you have sat here and talked to your mum for half an hour or an hour or whatever? And they're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, I do. I, I, yeah, absolutely, I do. Can I leave now? Can I leave now? Adrena Chrome Red Flag. I don't know about that, Christopher Clay. Really enjoyed what, that. That's a bit of a reach, to be honest. Like, if you think that the powers that be are organised enough to chase children through the woods, like, you're giving them a bit of uh, extra credit there, because most of them are just a bunch of money grubbing fuckers who couldn't do better than line their own pockets and sit in their own shit. Like, I don't know about that, but, you know, you think what you like, I suppose. Uh, he's like, yeah. Is that a Broadmoor doctor you have on there, Scott? Um, this is just uh, Tony Swindles on the left, medium, and Jason on the right, the man who found Nicola Bully. Uh, small, medium small. Oh, done yeah. it. And then there are other times where, you know, you're like, where you really are sorry for the stuff that you've got to talk about, you know. What are you saying to these people? These vulnerable people who have recently lost loved ones who have come to you for some solace. What are you saying to them that you're sorry for the stuff you've got to talk to? Well, you know, it turned out your uncle wasn't actually that much of a nice chuffer. <laughs> if you really want to know, I've got some things I can tell you about your uncle, you little fucker. Now sit down and listen to this. It's going to cost you £20 and you're not going to like much. <laughs> yeah. It's particularly like where there's been a troubled childhood or there's been a difficult passing and... And the person, you know, I had one the other... I bet they have a few difficult passings between them. Like week where the lady had sort of hung on longer than she should have done and she was coming back to her daughter to be like, I'm so sorry I put you through that. And a, a daughter was like, it's not her fault. It's like your mum believes it is. You know, your mum is really yeah. upset that she upset you. Um, your dead mum is upset that she hung around alive for too long and really should have just, you know, had the good grace to fucking pack up breathing... Stop putting you through it. That's what you want to hear, isn't it? That's a nice thing to say to somebody. I mean, if you're certain you're listening to their dead mum talk to you 
then you might feel confident in relaying that message. But if there's any part of you, <laughs> I remind you, no, 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 Life Shack, no. <laughs> Life Shack, I'm Julian Barrett. My sister's going to go tits for that. We, me and my sister watched all of the Mighty Boosh together and she would say, I'm Howard Moon. She tells me I'm like Howard Moon. And I'm like, no, coming at you like a ray, like a viper, like a train. I'm like, no, I'm more like Noel. I'm Noel Fielding. I'm the one with the snazzy hair and I'm the goth. I'm just a goth. I'm, I'm a love machine. I'm not, oh, do I have to be Howard Moon? You get to, okay, you can be, <laughs> where have you gone now? Live, live shot, you can be, you can be Noel Fielding. You can be Vince and I'll be Howard Moon. Great, yeah, that's fun. I'll go in goal, fine. But that, that's how he's nice. The only time it... You think you know he's lying, that's why he's sorry. John, we're not doing much of a sort of a red flag read. I'm not doing much of a body language, but yes, if I did, all red flags, all just a load of bullshit, loads of weird shit coming up in the body language, loads of weird choices, the vest, the teddy bears, the painted wall, the sofa, the haircut. Just all sorts of problems. It just affects you, like, I think, really badly on less on something different to the emotional. Have you ever had it where clairsentience, like, goes evil? I'll tell you what, we've got Super Chats is new today. You can send me a Super Chat. You can send me a tippy at coffee.com if you fancy that, if that's what you fancy, if that's what you like. You can send me a tippy here if you fancy that. I, I'm not, like, begging for tips or anything. I'm just making it known. Thank you. I'm at work here. Thank you. Better than sending these chuffers. I was just thinking about it. You know, these people are sending these. These people are doing this for money. You know, I'm doing this for money. So let's get that ball rolling. <laughs> we have had quite a few today, and I'm really, really grateful for them. Uh, Helen, is this a recent chat? This is two years old, but it's the one that I found where he's talking about his life and who he is. So I thought this was the best place to start. And you're like, <laughs> nobody suggested searching Emma's eyelashes. <laughs> Police at the scene have found an eyelash. Oh, no! <laughs> it couldn't have been Emma's because they wouldn't come off. <laughs> I'm actually dying. And uh, I woke up yesterday. What did he say? Like, goes AWOL. And you're like, uh, I'm dying. I'm actually dying. What? And it just affects you, like, I think, really badly on less on something different to the emotional. Have you ever had it where clairsentience, like, goes AWOL? And you're like, I'm dying. I'm actually dying. Well, when he said actually dying, he's making a joke. He means, like, dying on stage, which is really, like, that body language aspect, you know, the red flag, really alludes to the idea that, to him, it's a performance. I'm dying. Like, he didn't have his psychics telling him the, the stories, so he couldn't give people the, the readings. Or he was just absent of ideas, and he's dying on stage. It's something stand-up comedians do if their jokes don't go down well. Something I might have been doing today if my jokes haven't been going down well. But yeah, he's alluding to that. Therefore, it's a performance. Oh, dear. And then covering his mouth here instinctively, because what he said is alluding to the fact that it's a performance. He don't want to say that and show people the truth. Let's cover up. So this is bad. And... Uh I woke up yesterday and I said to Theo, I was like, I've had a stroke. And he was like, you what? I was like, I can't move my arm. And he was like, you're joking. I'm like, no, I've genuinely had a stroke. And then I was like, just sort of put my hand over it. And I'm like, oh, no, it's an old lady. It's an old lady. He woke up and he couldn't move his arm. So his first assumption was that he'd had a stroke. And on discovering he hadn't had a stroke, it turns out it's an old lady. It's an old lady. This is just, f I don't know what, I mean, you make up your own joke to that. I mean, what, what's going on? What's happened is he slept funny on his arm and he's just woke up and he you've done that. We've all done that. Oh, I don't like the way they jump to these weird conclusions about this shit. If you had something legit to show me, like your experience of spirituality is that I slept funny on my arm and it went numb. And in the morning I thought I had a stroke. Yeah. And as we got closer and closer <laughs> to the didn't. Fix logic. Thank you for the super chat. You give me a laugh on a wet Tuesday. That's what we're here to do, isn't it? That's what we're here to do. Is it Tuesday? Is it? I thought Tuesday is my day off. I think today's Wednesday. <laughs> you fucking nutter. <laughs> None of us know. No one can be sure. Let's not have any. Let's let's leave it up in the air like that. Let's leave it up in the air like that. None of us can be sure what day it is. We'll have to ask our spiritual mediums if we want to find out any truths. Yeah, 
it was getting worse and worse. And then I was like... It's Wacky Wednesday. And I was literally sat there waiting for this reading. Wacky, and wacky Wednesday. Wacky Wednesday, you chuffer. Phoned the lady. I was like, can we do this now? And she's like, oh, it's not till two o'clock. I'm like, your mother is going to kill me if I don't give this reading now. <laughs> I tell you what, in chat there as well. What are the odds on him just walking and finding Nicola all that after all that time? Um, it's weird, isn't it? I think either he had like okay, so I'm not going to give him any cred credence and credit with having psychic premonitions. I'm going to throw that in the bin. Obviously, everyone was checking the river the whole time. That's where these like they were like, oh, she thinks she's in the river. So like, where'd you get that idea from? You're fucking psychic. But I think some people have more like if you're going to discover. Nicola, number one, you have to be out walking the river. How many of us were doing that? None. None of us. So you have to be in, like, you have to make your opportunities, don't you? So he has, uh, like, if he could find Nicola, it's big for him. I like, imagine him getting up in the morning going, right, you know, I can change my life here. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to find her. And then now I'm going to be famous. And I'm the one that found Nicola. And I'll tell him it was my psychics and do you know what I mean? He's got like a, re it's like a, a job of work for him to do it. And I, like he has been more determined than other people in order to find her. It, that could be argued rather than his psych. Like if you're going to go up and down that river enough, eventually someone did find her and it was you. So that's what that tells me is that you're desperate for position in life. Maybe not in this particular story, but in life. Or foul play. Yeah, I mean like... I, I find it so fucking weird. His dog found it, apparently. His dog found it. Rocket Science said it today. So, uh, his do again, these are not facts. They're just, uh, unless Rocket Science has got them as facts. Like, you know, I, I haven't got them as facts. I'm saying what you're saying in chat. Like, so it's not even his fucking psychic. He's got a psychic dog. <laughs> and I was in agony. And it was, it was just Claire's sentence that just was going too strong. And I was just like, I don't understand this. But when I spoke to it, it turned out a mum was, you know, a mum was in such pain at the time of passing that she was screaming. And oh, bless her. But that was what she was trying to, and I said to her, God, it's killing. And the Indian spirit said, do you think it hurts you? <laughs> Imagine yeah. what I did. And I was like, yeah, fair point, fair point. You know? Yeah, if it's this bad for me, you know, it must have been dreadful. Yeah. yeah. I ended up in hospital a few years ago. Um, I got blood clots in my lungs and they really stepped away from me. And I felt like I'd lost a limb mm. because there was no communication, no connection at all. I used to not just having your voice in your head. You know? yeah. yeah, no. Sort of that's me that's me that's me i'm an idiot that's me i'm an idiot it's me i'm not like i'm only a chuffer on the internet i turned it down to blow my nose and now i'm back and i'm talking that was me come on that's me that's yeah. me that's me i'm an idiot I'm an idiot. That's me, I'm an idiot. Ten points on me. Ten points for me for being an idiot. Happens sometimes. Just got to have to accept it. <laughs> Nothing could be done. It's, it's fixed now, isn't it? It's fixed now. The medium ship. You know, it what I was doing was I was just doing my little comments, right? Okay, what I'm aware of now is we're at 37 minutes in and this is an hour and 20 minutes and we've done uh, two and a half hours of stream, yeah? So what I want to do is I want to let them talk a little more let it run a little more. Um, I'm not muted now, am I? I'm not muted now. Mute them, then mute yourself. Have I got COVID? No, I've had it before and it was a right chuffer, but uh, I've just got a cold at the moment. We're good now. What does the t-shirt say? His t-shirt, Fishing Deep Sea. My t-shirt says Hulkamania. So I can have that. <laughs> appropriate for Hulk Hulkamania is appropriate. Anyway, look, the... Um, yeah, okay, so we've done two and a half hours. We're doing good, right? We're doing good. We, we got to the point where my brain failed me and I muted myself. <laughs> uh, what I want to do is I want to let them push on a bit. You know, we could do more of this. We could come back to this and continue. Like, we've got enough time in the future to have lots of streams together, haven't we? And like, what's, what could be more fun than a return to listening to these chuffers? So we'll just keep that there for a minute. 
I wanted to show you some of the other stuff that I found about him as well. Because it wasn't just the one. You know, it wasn't just the one. This is him doing the actual readings live on the internet, dressed as if he's working at the Weatherspoons at the airport. So this is um, Jason Rothwell, Spiritual Psychics. This isn't his channel. This is just some fucking collection of them. It's a whole collection of them, look. And Thomas. I had my circle last night, and I told my circle uh, that when I um, go to Wollstone tomorrow night... That's her spirit guide behind her there. You think you can see an old man with his... sat there, fed up, bored. No, that's the spirit guide. You've just got psychic powers, mate. We've got them all here. So we could, you know, we can... We can come back to this, like, absolutely, you know, we can go through all these. And if I find one that has legit powers, you know, I'll, I'll admit it on the internet and I'll say they've got legit powers. Wow. They've shown me something. But but if they all turn out to be fucking nuts, <laughs> then I'll say that as well. So we've got that, you know, that's for the future as well. Let's what have a little look at it. Uh, benefit of turmeric is, but I'm sure one lovely person here would be um, able to tell us what that connection will be. Um, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking to her. Them. That, no, that's him. fine. The, Marcus the Lady. He was, he was talking to his spirit guide, look. I want to go back to the start of one of these readings. Let's... That's weird. Well, I'm too, thankfully, because it would get very confusing. Where's the start of this message to Marcus? And here, then I need it? to give. Um, Joe sent me some tippies. Thank you. This is what it's about for me. It's the moment, the money. <laughs> Started watching me a couple of weeks ago. Great channel, you mate. Thank you, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Um, it, obviously, this is going to be my full time job now, right? And I'm at two thousand subscribers, so that means I've been monetized recently. So I can sort of make like a dollar on each video. YouTube will scrub me up a dollar for each video I do, or something like that. But really, it's not. AdSense that's going to make it. It's we're going to get together as a bunch of chuffers. We're doing the tippies, we're doing the super chats. That's going into the kitty. We're going to create a membership system with tiers. We're going to have goals at the end where if I achieve a certain amount of money every month, I can say I'm being paid to make media. So god damn it, I'm going to go out there and make some media. And I won't just bring you the videos. I'll go to the medium and I'll film with them if you want. You know, we can do an episode on XYZ once a month, hopefully if we get the goals sorted and all that, we can say once a month, I'm going to go out with the camera and film with the people, set it up, and whatever you choose, whether it be mediums or um, retracing Nicola Bully steps or whatever you want me to do, uh, I'll put you up some options, you can vote for them, that sort of thing. That's where we're going in the future. But at the moment, it's tippies, it's uh, support it's through again. the online system, it's super chats, it's swoosh. Sally Dexter sending me tippies here on the coffee. And it really makes a difference, you know, because otherwise I'm not eating. So loving your channel so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, taking the extra little mile, extra little step to just uh, click a little link, which you can see in chat there, pew, and uh, send me the coffee tippies. Thank you part of the super chuffer crowd now. I'm going to have to give you some names, aren't I? Like, you know, you it's can be the, the chufferettes. <laughs> or the, the chufferoos. <laughs> silver sent me some tippies as well. A couple of pieces of silver. Cross my, cross my palm with silver. They appreciate me. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And this has all come because Michael Brooks found Nicola Bully, isn't it? It's all come. Right. So let's have a reading. Let's finish on a reading. Let's get a reading done. And then, uh, oh, I'll tell you what as well. Tell you what as well, tomorrow we're doing Paul, doing finishing off the red flags, reading through the police statement, seeing if it, because I think it feels like it was written by Paul, seeing if we can find any red flags in that final statement they've given recently, and uh, tying up some loose ends. The voice chat is open again. You can send me a message, super chuffer. Send me a message through the internet. About a minute and a half long. Please, let's not go mad. Let's not go mad this time. Let's not send me five messages and set seven messages each. Let's go, let's go a bit easy on me. If you've got, it takes about a minute 30, you can record it. Look, you press start recording and you've got time and you're talking and you're recording and you're doing your recording and you're talking and you stop and then you don't have to send me your email. Just the name is fine. That's fine. And then, well, well you send them in and then you see them and they come up and I get them. Yeah. Um, my voice went a bit funny in my ear as well. When I, anyway, so you've got that in chat now, right? That means that you can uh, 
send me a message. And tomorrow's show, once we've done the uh, catch up on Paul, we'll do the messages and then we'll do the red flags. We'll you know, try and do a loose ends show tomorrow because I've got a few messages that still came in that I still didn't get to that were after the, the event. So um, make sure you get your messages in by tomorrow for that. And we're doing Paul tomorrow. And then I've also got another episode coming up, which I've got planned on Monday, hopefully, hopefully now, and this, this is how hopefully now, because Steve's talking to people who've got COVID. If you go to playlists on this channel and you go to Thus Podcast, we've got, what am I doing? Chuff off. I just want the, the playlist to chuff her. There you go. There's a playlist here. I make a little podcast. I get my friend Steve of the Dead. He has got his own YouTube channel and he's a forensic psychologist. I get him on. We do an episode every Monday. One Monday's serious, the other Monday's fun. One Monday's serious, the other Monday's fun. So this is the serious ones. And there'll be some stuff you might find interesting here. On Monday, if he's well enough, we're doing Narcissism 101. If he's well enough. If not, we might have to push it back another week. That, that's just how it is. You know, what can I do? COVID's COVID. What time tomorrow? I hope to be around tea time, Angela, in the UK. Probably about 6 or 7 p.m. in the UK. Probably about 6, maybe. Uh, I don't... I need to find a more regular schedule but I'm just going with the flow at the moment. I wanted to be on in the daytime earlier, but I think people kind of like it a bit in the evening. Uh, we'll see. I'll be on around and about. And I'll put it up. You'll see if you're subscribed to the channel and the notified notifications on, then uh, it will come up. I'll put the uh, thumbnail up about a couple of hours before it goes live uh, or tonight or tomorrow or something. You know, it's something for me to do. Um, but yeah, so we're doing that tomorrow. And then later in the week as well, you know, I've got other episodes planned. So we've got Narcissism on Monday. And also, I want to take a look at uh, some, if I go to my watch later, where's my watch later? Show me my watch later. Not there then. Show me my watch later, you chuffers. Where's my watch later? Press YouTube, maybe. There it is, library. Watch later. I've got some other videos to watch later, including this one. Brian, come here. Come here. I want to do an episode on these chuffers because I think these are cool. I, I, I don't know. Like, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. Obviously, they don't have the phone up at the start until they're sure they've got the right person. And you've been what speaking what you believe uh, as, a, as, a, as a young child from England. That's why we're here. Grooming a child, you chuffer. You understand? Huh? I can show you some paperwork that will uh, show you that um, who you've who you've been speaking to. What 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 the fuck's happened to your face? What's up with your eye? <laughs> Look at that chuffer. What the fuck has happened to his eye? What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. So these pedo stings, I find them compelling viewing. These pedo stings, compelling viewing, and this one particularly was compelling viewing. So I'd like to review this one, the pedo hunters. <laughs> Look, what's wrong with his fucking eye? So look out for that. I've got, I've got, you know, I've got episodes. Don't worry. We've got episodes coming up. Serious, fun, psychology, criminology, uh, sorry, forensic psychology, uh, Nicola Bully, n mediums, larges, extra larges, smalls, all my corporals and sarges. Police will be bent like Pilates. Seen a group of girls, they smell like menages. Bare to their necessities. Rest easy, got the answers from the smarties. So bright right now, illuminate the Illuminatis. Who's got control of your telly's got your countries. And all your armies who fight for gun monies. You know the answer, so what's the use? You waste your lives on trivial pursuit. It's not a game. A general knowledge could be a soldier. A private knowledge. I come to show you a Sufi who moved me to change up my act. I've been fasting forward and I don't look back. I got killers you can't catch like Jack the Ripper. Killers you can catch and give back like Corona. Well, Billy Elliot can be a ballerina. A million of kids get killed in Syria. I'm looking at the man in the mirror gonna make a change. Yo. Boom. You didn't know I could rap, did you? Didn't you, you didn't know I could rap? Well, I can. Wrap you up like Curse of the Mummy. Step into the club so sweet, try and find honeys. Near to where you live, then it's to you I want to address that too. Okay, so um, we've got a message. We've got a message from the other side. And you would understand the December month being significant to yourself because that is what you're making reference to at this moment in time. Um, Dece I wonder if December, is anyone out there? Is anyone out there? Did, is December significant to anyone? December. I'll tell you why they use December. A lot of people who are 
old and sadly, you know, going to pass. And they try and hold on. And they try and hold on through Christmas. Honestly, my nan did. It was just like that. In fact, she was in hospital on Christmas Day. And we were talking to her on the fucking phone because of all that COVID nonsense. We were on the phone to her. I went, oh, man, I don't get me started on that. But, um, yeah, uh, lots of people. Ha and then, like, you know, December might be a time that people pass for that reason. It's midwinter. There's lots of reasons why December's a time that people... A medium's camp is Christmas. <laughs> Certainly Christmas has been raised here. His, his spirit guide's telling him. Do you know the lighting? Have you seen the lighting? The choice of lighting? It's not particularly appropriate, but we could assume that might not be an LED light thing. What that might be is that his spirit is particularly pink today. Lots of healing being sent to the earth. Lots of healing. Um, and where's this other lady? There's another lady coming, and we just have to find who she is. He's got another lady. Marcus, you should understand a lady who suffered with pneumonia at the time of a person. Oh, there is a lady get off. who feels like um, anti to yourself. Get off. Pneumonia is like the most common killer of old people. Like they, they, they call it old man's friend because it's like the most... Even if you've got other problems, it's the thing that might finish a lot of people off. Pneumonia. Like, get up. You can't just say the most popular time for people to die. Popular. <laughs> I hear it's popular in the Mediterranean this time of year. Yes. I hear Christmas is a popular time to die. Yes. <laughs> the most popular. Sorry for getting, you know, dour with it. But pneumonia. Yeah. Well done. Like, yeah. Spiritual fucking awakening happening here. Yeah. Go on then. Go on. I don't know the Welsh word for our auntie, thankfully. Because it would get very confusing. He's talking to him. And then I need to give um, either um, a police officer. He's got his headphones in as well, though. Or a connection to the police force or the word Bob. Bob. You've got a collection. You've got either a police force, a police officer, or just simply the word Bob. This is what the spiritual... Like, if you're... <sighs> If you're getting messages from the other side, right, and they're that vague, your spirit guides on a wrong one, aren't they? You've got the crap spirit guide. You've got the worst one. You've got the pound shop spirit guide, mate, haven't you? I think, I think maybe, uh, I don't know, the police or... I'm thinking maybe Bob. Bob. <laughs> pound, pound shop spirit guide, mate. They can't even be specific. you got Marcus here on the line. Marcus. Watching the Spiritual Psychic TV. It always amazes me as well, right? It always... Why is he doing it with the earphones in? He's working at the fucking car phone warehouse. Look, he's still in his uniform. Look, the, um, it amazes me. This is another one. Why aren't they millionaires? Why aren't they millionaires? James Randi was quite famous in America. He uh, was basically against all forms of psychic fraud. Very, very against psychic fraud. And he would bust psychics. We can talk about him. We could probably do an episode on him rather than bringing him up now for 10 seconds. But uh, he would bust psychic fraud. Like, you would go on telly and say, oh, I'm like Yuri Geller and I can bend spoons. And he'd go, fuck happier. off, Yuri Geller. <laughs> Thank you for the tippies. Julia sent me some tippies there on the coffee system. I'm eternally grateful for this. This is going to be uh, more and more important as we grow that I can sustain the ability to come here and, and do this with you. So like, this is who's paying for it. These truffers. So everyone else should say thank you, Julie, as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. James, James Randy used to like, it's up to you what you believe and it's up to you what you want to investigate and what you want to think. I'm not telling you what to think. I'm telling you what James Randy used to think and what he used to do. Yeah. So he was so like be in his bonnet about this sort of stuff that he set up a prize and there's a million pounds. I think it's still going actually. I think they're still doing it. So if you want a million pounds, which you do, you obviously do want the run. You want this $1 million paranormal challenge and offered by the James Randi foundation to pay out a million dollars to anyone who could demonstrate a supernatural or paranormal activity under agreed upon scientific testing criteria. All you got to do is just prove it. And they will give you a million pounds. Or there's a psych the show with the hundred dollar psychic prize they did. Like, come on and do a psychic and get a hundred thousand uh, dollars. An internet pioneer, Rick Adams, donated one million pounds for the prize. So it exists. It's been donated. Go and claim it. Go and claim it. 
no, if you're psychic, go and claim it. James Randy's offering you the money. So it amazes me that someone with a spirit guide, someone that can... I've got to remember to turn the volume back up when I blow my nose again. I'm getting my nose blocked. I got blocked on the internet. I got my nose blocked. Huh? Uh, it amazes me that someone that can hear spirit guides, yeah, they're doing you wrong because what they've got you set up with is a fucking 480p webcam and a bright pink lamp in your front room with your pound shop mirrors and your fucking, with your charity shop air ambulance hospice mirrors and you've dressed up like you're serving fucking lagers at the Weatherspoons at the airport. This is not acceptable, right? You shouldn't be doing this badly. You've got the... I can just normal chuffer on the internet. All I've got is me and my brain, yeah? I ain't got any other bonus features. You've got a... He's dressed like a snooker player. You've got a fucking... I don't, for me, he feels like he's about to bring you over some coffee. Or like, you know, like coffee, but not coffee like you might... pret a porter or whatever they're called, or pret a monja. Not with none of your posh Costa coffee. Not that... He's got coffee. He's, you know he's bringing the coffee in one of those little um, uh, metal, little metal kettle. Do you remember them from the cafe? Little metal kettle, and you had your salt and pepper on the table. And you could smoke while you were sat there. Little metal kettle. Do you remember that? The little metal. I'm gonna have to get that up now. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? You know the little metal kettle. Little metal. I can't spell, but little metal kettle. I, I don't want to see. I want to, it's going to show me some posh wank here now, isn't it? Look, here we go. That's what I want. This is what I want. I don't want none of your posh... I'm not looking for a designer chuffer. This is what I'm talking about. Teapot, mate. This is a teapot. If you don't know, you better get to know. Those who know, know. That's a teapot. That's what you're getting your tea in. Doesn't matter where you get... All over the country for a while. Everywhere. Up and down. Get in your poppins. Get your full English. Little pot of tea. What happened to them? There must be scrapyards that are full of these because no one's using them anymore. They've gone out of fashion. Bring me a coffee in one of them. Um, I shouldn't have shown you my Amazon then, should I? That was probably a mistake. Um, I'll edit, I might have to edit that bit out in the, the final cut. You know, only you and I know about that, that little joke. That might have to get edited out. <laughs> uh, don't worry, don't worry. It's, it, it's like, you, you're all good people. No one's going to cause me any troubles. I do have to live somewhere. And if I have to fucking move because I'm so popular on the internet, that's one of those good problems. That's the problem that I'm saying that this chuffer, where has he gone, doesn't have. No one's knocking his door down. <laughs> He's not got to move to the, you know, the penthouse. What is a penthouse anyway? Why has it got a funny name? Why has it got a funny name? Penthouse. It always reminds me of porn magazines. Penthouse. I don't want to live in the penthouse. It sounds like I live in the fucking hustler. The Hustler Basement. The penthouse on top of the Hustler Basement. Anyway, look. This guy, he's not doing that well for himself, is he? Despite the added advantage of the media. He's going to come and bring me a little coffee in a little metal kettle. Airline steward. <laughs> didn't make it. He didn't manage to get through the... He bought all that kit, didn't he? Look, he's brought his waistcoat for the interview. He didn't get through the interview process. I'm sorry, but maybe next time... He's applied to Wizz Air. He's applied to BMI Baby. He's applied to EasyJet. They won't have him. They won't have him. He comes with the meal deal. And would you like the... <laughs> you, can, you can imagine him saying it, can't you? You can imagine him saying it. And would you like a meal... Would you like that with the meal deal? Would you like... You can have a bag of crisps without it. Have it with the meal deal. Sandwich, bag of crisps and a drink. Meal deal. <laughs> fucking meal deal man it's not a meal is it it's a sandwich and a bag of crisps it's not a meal is it just because I'm drinking a can of fucking coca-cola is it not a meal so no one's <sighs> meal deal I suppose it does count as a meal in a way it's a snack snack don't start making me think I'm doing better than I am just because you called it a meal deal you fuckers sold me an extra bag of crisps there that I didn't even need listen to him the name Bob Bobby. Bob, Bobby. Bobbin. Right. Bobbin. Bobbins. Bob. Bobba. Head jobber. Nosha. Get on with it. I see a policeman at the moment, and that always says to me, I need to talk about um, one of those particular words, which is very imprecise. But 
that is what they're making reference to. So what they do is cold reading. They say vague stuff and then you go, oh yeah, you know, now it occurs to me that my Uncle Robert never got called Bob, but could have once been called Bob once in one circumstance once. Oh yeah, I remember now that when my nan died, uh, like several months later, the police wanted to know something about something and like, you know, my next door neighbour got like, you know, busted for something. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, 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 I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I hope Marcus is not having this either. His mum's downstairs doing his fish fingers. <laughs> mum! Mum, is it fish fingers for tea again? Me psychic said you're not doing mushy peas. I want mushy peas as well. <laughs> Me psychic, they're saying you're not doing the mushy peas, mum. Where's the mushy okay. peas? Um, yeah, okay, okay. I want a big fish, I want a big chips, and I want a curry sauce. And I don't want, no, I don't want you to share the chips. I want the chips for myself. I want a big chips for myself. <laughs> They're making reference to somebody. Um, obviously, as you know, mediums are not qualified doctors. We do not... Pursue- this one's a medium rare. This one. This one's a medium rare, mate. This one. This one's a rare breed. Scribe um, substances um, or, or treatments for things. But they are talking about turmeric. Turmeric. I have no idea what the medical... There would be, if they knew what it was, they'd call it turmeric, wouldn't they? So you've called it turmeric. So your spirit guide is equally as uninformed about turmeric as you are. That's a coincidence. Uh, benefit of pickled onion monster munch. Love pickled onions in the chat as well. Yeah, I love pickled, on- pickled onions. You see, listen, I'm not some. I'm a super chuffer, and I can go in the nice restaurants, and I can pull your chair out for you, and I can order off the menu and all that business. You know, I know which fork I should use to poke the waiter with when I want his attention. I know which fork I'm supposed to use. I've got all that down. I, I can be civilised. I can be serious. At the same time, you know, I'm only a normal chuffle like us, aren't I? Like, we're only normal people. We only go in the fucking chip shop. We all go in the fucking chip shop. Even the king shits, mate. Like, Jesus. Like, we're all just normal chuffers down to earth. Normal. Do you remember when your nan had... Do you remember my nan, right? I don't know if your nan had this. My nan had this. She had a... um a pickled onion fork thing and you'd use it and you could push the pickled onions off. It was like a device specifically for the removal of pickled onions from the jar. It was a little fork and then you could push them off with a little button. Pickled onion fork, my nan had. She loved that. That was top bins. Rick is, but I'm sure one lovely person here would be... Pot noodle um, sarnies. ...to tell us what that connection will be. Um, you look at him looking off! Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, no, that's fine. The- no, 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 that's fine. No, no. Like, what he's going doing is he's looking off out over there. Like, why is he looking off out of there? This troubles me. This troubles me. Why is your psychic off up over there? Can't they come down over here? Can't you, stop making me look over there. I'm doing the computer. Can't you sit above the computer so I can look at... No, I'm looking at the camera. Just sit over there by the camera. Don't they listen to you? These spirit guides. They just do what the fuck they like. They're up there in the ceiling. Come down. Oh, he's off up over there. I'll listen to... He said what? You have to look over there while you're listening. It's fucking weird, this is. This is weird. <laughs> the police are asking. Yeah, the police are asking. That's what's going on in the back of his mind, isn't it? This subconscious. The police are asking. They will be after he's said what he's about to... I don't know what he's about to say. His camera angle, narcissism, apparently. We'll have to look into that when we get my forensic psychologist friend on again because he's done like a module on his degree about narcissism so I'm going to get him to give me the lowdown from the high ground that no that's fine the, no that's fine Marcus the lady who stepped forward who comes forward as auntie she's actually saying um, oh this has got a top chat replay as well look lovely so you would understand why the Bob your best friend has just passed away I'm very sorry for uh, your physical loss Marcus I just know I have to give you both of those words. I would have to give you what... What? Hang on, wait. Marcus in chat. Now, hang on. (laughs) Wait, wait. Now, hang on, right? Marcus in chat says Bob's just died. Like, it turns out... (laughs) Turns out this guy's got it bang on. Marcus Lapser... Bob has just died. Bob has just died. Wait. Wait. Now. Wait. Who's this? Wait. Who's this? Yeah, okay. 
Um, I've got I've got a little photograph of my mum on on the screen on the big screen. Now my mum wasn't into spiritualism. And- Who's this? <laughs> Medium demonstration with Marcus Lapser. That's convenient, isn't it? That's convenient, isn't it? Strangely enough, what, right? <laughs> strangely enough, Marcus in this one in this top chat here. Strangely enough, Marcus hasn't been able to communicate with his own dead relative. <laughs> but he's in chat here, verifying all the things that this chuff is saying. <laughs> Marcus! <laughs> no, Marcus! <laughs> All I had to do is put you in the YouTube. Hello, Eletheria. 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 Hello. I hope you're well. Eletheria. We're having a great time today looking into this strange mediumship ring of liars. It's come out of a random... It's come out of random space. But Eletheria. Eletheria. I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I'm sure, aren't I? I'm pronouncing it wrong. Eletheria. 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 Um, you're a wonderful artist. And I tell you what, um, I'm looking for emojis, emoticons. We're about to get memberships going on this channel. And I'd like a set of emoticons. But I'd like someone who's got a bit of thought and care and passion behind it to make some things that we can all be proud of. Maybe simple things that mean like hooray or no or, you know, emotional things. But also that uh, have some... I, I love your work. So let's have a chat about it. I've sent you a tweet on your Twitter. Um... Or maybe you could email me or something. Uh, like, well, let's have a chat about it. Let's make sure. I'll, I'll try and catch up with you on Twitter. I'll send you another tweet on Twitter and try and get up up to date with that because I'm looking for your. I'll support you and your artwork. I'll pay you, is what I'm saying, for a job of working. So, um, nice to see you in chat there. Nice to see you in chat. Uh, all I had to do is put Marcus into YouTube here, and he came up. So we know what's going on here, That's don't we? Cool, uh, benefit of turmeric is. But I'm sure one lovely person here would be um, able to tell us what that connection will be. Um, Jay-Z says he nodded off, uh, or they nodded off, sorry. Uh, Can we cut to the chase? Is the discovery sus? This man, right, this man smells worse than the fish market. Like, he smells fishier than the damn fish market. He smells fishier than a crate of whiskers. This man smells fishier than my ex-girlfriend's minge. This man smells fishier, right? This man smells fishier. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I've seen octopodes that smell less fishy than this man. This man is so fishy. This man's so fishy he's got gills. This man... <laughs> Jesus. He smells fishier than that river. <laughs> I'm surprised the dog didn't think he was the one that was floating up. He smells so fishy. Oh, he smells fishier than his own fish fingers that his mom's doing. Oh no, fishier! He smells fish. He's fishier, fishier than nuclear fission, mate. This guy, he's so fishy. He found her. He found her. Poor Nicola, Mo- Nicola Murray. I've forgotten her name now. Nicola Bully. Don't forget a name. Never forget a name. That was me being. That was me being flippant. That was me being flippant. Actually, I shouldn't say that. There are there are times where I will pick myself up and say, "Hang on, let's not make." You know, let's not let's not make the wrong joke here. Um, thank you for making me laugh. New sub. Thank you for subbing. Thank you. I'll remind everyone, like, if you're not subbed here, what the fuck are you doing? It's free. Do you know what I mean? Like, why are you watching this and you're not subbed? Like, it's free. So all you have to do is press a button. What's the worst that can happen? I'm not going to come around your house and kick your door in like this chuffer. I'm not going to drag you out and drown you in the river like Paul Ansel. <laughs> fuck it. Paul Ansel didn't do my spirit medium said he might. His spirit. Someone's spirit medium, I think, said something about it. Um, <laughs> why didn't he find it three weeks ago? I don't know. Fuck you now. Like, I think he's desperate to be... Like, if he hadn't found her, he'd still be up and down walking that river today. Because what's he got going on in his life? He wants to be seen as a famous medium. And I'll tell you how you get found to be a famous medium is if you discover the dead. So I would, I would warrant this isn't his first rodeo. I would say his modus operandi is you study the news and if something comes up and it's local and they're missing a body, you fucking head down there and the police aren't doing a big search and you're on it and you find them. Ching, 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 ching. Cash in the attic. 
It's a Paul Ansel joke there. Um, yeah, cash in the attic. So I think he's just like turning up and uh, I think he's got a, a, a morbid fascination. I would argue, I, I don't know this man. No, here's my psychic reading on him. If he wants to come on the show, if he ever wants, to, uh, if he's watched this, if he's watched this far, he's going to be furious. I'll tell you what, if he's watched this far, he's going to be furious because we've been doing three hours of this. So he's going to be, at this point, he's going to be absolutely livid. And as soon as he's finished his wank, he's, he's going to be he's going to be on the phone to, to his lawyers. Um, right. He's, at, the, at this point, he's going to be livid. But I will say, I will say, I've forgotten his name now. What is his name? It's in my title of my video. It's, it's the title of me today. I should know what I'm doing. Jasper something. Jasper. He said, come up there. YouTube said, now is a good time to insert ads. It's not, you know, YouTube. It's not. I'm talking. Um, Jason Dean Rothwell. That's him. Jason. I, I don't think Jason Dean is like, isn't Jason Dean a fake name then? Okay, I'm going to do a read on him, right? Jason Dean's going to be a fake name. So maybe even the Rothwell is as well. Like, isn't Rothwell like cigarettes? Wait, let's find Rothwell. Let's just put that in first. So what's Rothwell? I bet it'll be a brand or something. There'll be a, uh, it's a place, Rothwell. Okay, a place then, a place. That's where he's got that one. Northamptonshire. I'm guessing it's that. He's going off a place name. That's not his surname. No, it's, a, it's his stage name he's got, isn't it? So, Jason Dean. Not Jason Dead. That's the wrong one. That's inappropriate, Scott. Jason Dean. Oh. There you go, then. Christian Slater rings a bang true, doesn't it? That's the right era for this guy. Christian Slater. He'd have been in some movie that's about, like, murder or something, and there'll be some death involved, and it'll be like like The Crow. Like, when I was growing up, we were all goths because of The Crow. Do you know what I mean? There'll be some romance. Like, he must have fucking loved this guy when he was a kid. He must have wanted to get right up on him. He loves this guy. So this is his favourite film, whatever this film is. Jason Dean. Uh, Heather's wiki fan. It's Heather's. <laughs> I'm going bang on. I love it when I'm bang on. It's Heather's. No, I only got, I mean, I could have, I could have guessed it because I was alive during the time. I've never watched Heather's, but I could have guessed it. I could have known maybe, maybe, you know, maybe that's in my subconscious. But Heather's is a film about murders, isn't it? They do murders in it, don't they? They do the murders actually, don't they? Doesn't, you tell me in chat if you've ever seen Heather's. Do you know what, what goes on in Heather's? Um, doesn't Winona Ryder do a murder? This is the main antagonist. Kills three students who hurt Veronica. Okay, so now this is fucking weird, right? This is fucking weird. I don't like this anymore. It's got too dark. Because this guy that I'm doing the, the read on has got a fascination with murder. He's created a... Um, like... <sighs> We're going to go dark at the end of the episode. And I don't want to go dark at the end of the episode. But... I'll have him on the show if he wants to come on the show and, like, you know, I'll rip him live to his face if he wants, yeah? But he's got a fascination with murder, morbid. He wants to be around dead bodies. He wants to go and touch a dead body. He wants to go and see a dead body. He has done since the deaths in his family caused his brain to break when he was in his teenage years. Like, we all have mental health problems. That's okay. It's not like, you know, you're um, a horrible person for that. But it's what you do and what you choose after that, yeah? Uh he wants to, it's not just the occult, right? In chat here, bear this out, right? It's not just the occult, it's actual dead bodies. He's named himself after a person who deaded people. A sexy murderer. Sexy murderer. Uh, he had bullied, ostracised, set apart from society. Outsider. Fuck them, I'll murder them. I think if you're walking down, like you see about the, talking about the canal pusher, right? If you're walking down the canal and this guy's coming towards you, there's a 50-50. It's a 50 he might push. Like, it goes on in his mind. Like, if he can get away with it and no one knows, ooh, I don't know. Like, uh, I don't like the, the feel of it. Naming yourself after a murderer is the reason for that. So it's not like, oh, I'm slandering him. He's named himself after a murderer. A famous film murderer. A romantic, sexy film murderer. Do you know what I mean? You might have to hear me blow my nose this time because I can't be bothered to mute myself every time. Close your ears. Oh, that's a COVID spreader. I ain't got the COVID. I just got. I ain't got the COVID. We've all got the COVID. I ain't got the COVID. Um, 
you wondered if someone simply pushed her. Is it possible this guy could have been in the area and actually just like a random foul player? Is it possible? No, I don't think this guy's done that to Nicola. I think he, what I'm saying is, I think he's got it in him. I don't, I'm not saying he's definitely done murders. I think he's got it in him to be attracted to the murders, to be fantasizing about the murders, to get hard over the murders, to, you know, like he's infatuated with it, like obsessed with it in a creepy way. Not, and so the reason he wants to be a medium is so that he can insert himself between you and your experiences of death. And he can insert himself close to the corpses and the dead. Like, he's not doing this to help people. He's doing this so he can be close to the dead. Maybe he even believes it. Maybe he's one of these people that's, like, so full-tapped that he believes this, right? But, like, he uh, he has been, in his it's testimony... Again. I couldn't be happier. Hello, Ordbod. Nark Slayer. Or, that, that's, a, that's a chuffing name. It reminds me of, like, a, it makes me think of, like, an Amazonian princess with a great big sword. Ordbod, Nark Slayer. Just found you, Chuffer. Love your insights and measured humour. Thanks. Um... Uh, yeah, I do appreciate these tippies coming, actually. Like, this is the coffee system. You can see it in chat. And we've also got super chats now. So, like, uh, this is how I'm eating. So, let's keep that rolling. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we've got a guy here. Sorry, I was, like, train of thought and it just thrown off a little bit. But that doesn't... That's fine. That's fine. We've got a guy here who is uh, infatuated by death. Wants to be close to corpses. Finds it... You know, have you ever seen a dead body? Like, some people find that intriguing and fascinating in a creepy way that's normal we all do because it's different and it's like uh taboo and it's like this other side not the spiritual world just an actual dead body yeah um morbid fascination is a normal thing because we're all a little bit afraid of death and we don't know the answers so it's okay for us all to feel like that a bit but then if you make it your career like it's like saying i want to become a mortician because i like being close to dead people like you're not going to get the job of mortician because you're this guy but you might get the job of whatever the fuck you're doing here You've like, it's cre It's even more creepy because you're not providing like a, um, like if you're a mortician, you have ethics and codes of practice and like, you know, a sort of framework around it. You're making up your own one. And then you're doing this weird talking to the voices, which is like scary as fuck. So uh, thank God it's fake. Thank God we proved it to be fake. Unless of course that other medium wasn't able to contact their own uh you know, that medium wasn't able to contact their own loved ones. We've kind of proved it's fake, thank God, this particular one. Ooh, but it is a weird, creepy thing, isn't it? So I'm saying that this guy spends his time, with all that in mind, all that morbid fascination in mind, he's probably done the serial killers thing. He's probably, like, gone to the scenes of serial killer crimes. He's probably... Um, good point there in chat. Dead animal, bad enough, FFFs. Yeah, he's probably the sort of person that will go and, like, you know, poke at the roadkill in that way, uh, a little bit sadistic, maybe, a little bit of a sadistic streak running through him, uh, potential here to turn into a murderer, like potential, I would say, like some people don't have as much potential to do murders, because they're nice people, this one, a bit of few red flags, and then I'm guessing that what he's ch chosen to do is, like I say, if I now go, this is, this I'm guessing is his modus operandi here, is we go, uh, um, what are we looking for? We're looking for an un... It'll only come up with Nicola Bully, won't it? But we're looking for uh, unsolved... Or missing person. Missing person. This is going to be horrible to do, actually. It's going to be dark, but, you know, what the fuck? Uh, I don't make the rules. Um, missing person. Like that. And then all in UK. Let's just do UK. Oh, and Madly I'm a can again. Uh, missing people. I don't really actually I don't want to do this like this it's a bit harsh for these people I think we should look at missing people seriously as a serious episode one time so I'll, I'll leave that there uh, but let's say for example it was Madly I McCann it's a better example what he does is he finds it in the news imagine Madly I McCann's just happened and no one knows he gets himself out there he gets himself on the scene because you're not going to find her sitting at home on your ass yeah and if he's the one that finds her He's got like a one in 10 chance of being the one because he's out there on the search and it's likely they'll turn up and all this business. If he is, that's like your CV. That's like, I didn't have to go and work at Woolworths for 20 years. I just went and found this woman. I'm a famous person. Like, I think there's that is his modus operandi. And I think it's not the first time that he's gone on Google and found, you know, a, a, a story to chase, so to speak. And he said that he found other people. There was one confirmed case in the media that or the media confirmed that he found these other people what's his chuffing name again 
this fake name is un... Why is he using this weird fake name? Because this fake name stands out as being like a red flag. Oh, my tummy went a little bit there. Uh, it's all about Nicola Bully, isn't it, now? I want to find... Jason Dean Rothwell um, finds... It'll all be about Nicola Bully. So maybe I can't find that final you know, piece of this puzzle because he, he's supposed to have found another sad, dead person before. Uh, yeah. So that's my thoughts on him. That's my thoughts on him. I'm not going to do the rest of his read here because we proved that to be a fucking weird, shambolic thing. What I would say is that in the future, I think there's some subjects where I... It's like a rabbit hole, yeah? You know about these rabbit holes on the internet, don't you? In chat. Have you ever watched rabbit hole videos in chat? You all you chatters. Do you ever watch any of those like down the rabbit hole? If I actually find one. Would you ever go down a rabbit hole yourself where it's video after video? Down the rabbit hole is a series of videos made by this one guy where he, he does like overviews of stuff. They're two hours long. We can react to them sometimes. Um, what the medical... Uh, I think this guy is a bit of a rabbit hole in a way. I don't think there's loads of content on him. I don't think there's loads, but we've looked at the main one where he describes himself. We've looked at, uh, there's this one, which we will look at briefly to finish. And uh, there's this other one we're going to do as an episode, which is, it's an interview with him again. Different interview. It's William and the Magic Box. I don't know what's in his magic box. <laughs> but we've got other episodes we can do on this guy, right? I don't know how the wave flow goes. I don't know what happens. Maybe, maybe something else comes up in the news and we end up doing something different. What I think is, when we do memberships, when we have like a member system, it might be that we do a member stream once a week and these extra bits that get too much, like finishing off the, uh, the chat, there's still like 40 minutes in that. You know, we could, we could take these and put them as members content for those that really, you know, really want that extra, extra bit. Uh, and I think today's stream at three hours is probably quite a good, quite a good length, so to speak. So I'll finish off with a very short video of him. Yeah, we'll finish off with this. As I'm in the midst of a Not this. If I could Grammarly, Grammarly. I didn't get bullied at school into learning how to spell just so I could get Grammarly. Fuck off. Theo's been going mad at me. I've been, I've made a compost heap. I, it's in my bin. But, you know, like your garden waste bin, well, I've not been putting it out, I've just been filling it up. Right. This is Julian Chamberlain uploaded this. I don't know who they are, but Julian Chamberlain uploaded this, and I'm reacting to it, so fair, fair use. But I've been putting food waste in it as well, and every couple of days I move it into the sun so it warms, and I... Th I, don't, I don't think you have to move your compost bin into the sun to warm it. Throw a cup of water in it, and it's been sweating, and there are flies in it, and it's made a lovely, lovely, rich compost at the bottom of it i mean there's, there's stuff on it now so i can't really dig out but what hey fix logic 388 in chat only 162 likes use your thumbs up and feed this poor chuffer the thumbs up button does not feed me but it is free and if you have not clicked likes on this this yet if you've not clicked like on it yet well go on then go on what are you doing go on give me a little thumb a little workout give it a little workout and give me a little like Go on, get your likes in. Get your likes in. I know you like that. Oh, I know you like that. Give me a little thumb. Give me a little thumb. Press your little thumb on there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's free. Subscribe. It's free. Cheer up, your chuffer. But that's fascinating. In You know, I threw a load of waste into a bin. Yeah. And a few weeks later, that waste had turned into... There was mould and funguses and all sorts. And then at the same time, I then threw protein in there, meat. Meat? Where are you getting your meat to throw in your compost? What's going on here? This sounds dodgy as well, doesn't it? This sounds fucking dodgy as well, to be honest. And suddenly there are flies. Thousands of flies. I don't even know how... Do you know what I mean? Morbid fascination as well, isn't it? This is curiosity with the death. The the um, This is curiosity for the... The breakdown of the body. These are... Fuck, this guy's a... They got in there, but you know, probably. <laughs> he's not vegan, he's had loads of meat <laughs> in chat there, Simplistic 67. But then they, they, that was wonderful, and now through it, there is this lovely, rich, almost sawdust like 
earth that will be good for planting next year or later this year. You just gotta look at the little things. The little things are fantastic and they are where happiness is. And you know, before I What? I mean, you know I, mean, I don't know where this is clip from, I don't know what this is from, this has been put up and he's got a bit of a strange tattoo on his arm if anyone wants to go hell for leather with their conspiracies i'm sorry i set you off on that road shouldn't have done that shouldn't have pointed that out but he's got a weird tattoo but uh yeah this is this is this what it's the little things in life that you take isn't it the little pleasures in life like watching meat rot on your compost heap imagine living next door to this chuffer doreen doreen he's putting the fucking bin in the sun again he's putting the bin into the sun again doreen Close the close the kitchen window, the fly story. Get up get that bin off the front lawn. You You get that bin off the front lawn. You do all the flies, you chuffer. Get that bin off the front I'm, I'm having the council about you. This chuffer. <laughs> this chuffer, man. You wouldn't have it, would you? You wouldn't have it. You wouldn't have it. It's not wrong to be gay. That's fine. Be as gay as you want. You know, like I said earlier, suck as many cocks as you want. It doesn't bother me. It's fine. Go mad. Go mad. One in each hand. Go fucking mad. It's fine. It doesn't bother me. Put in your fucking meat bin out in the sun because you enjoy the little pleasures in life. We're starting to have problems. There's kids. Kids in the area. They're fucking meat bin over here. Johnny Meatbin. I don't know what to say, really. At least he's kind of coordinated his hat, though, and his vest. At least he's gone for that kind of coordination on the hat and the vest. That's, that's a fashion choice. That's nice. It does make me worry as well, because, you know, you've got to think about what you're doing in life, whether you... Like, <laughs> how am I going to say this? Sometimes people do things, right? And they're not the best things in the world. Like, we've all done them. Haven't we? We've all done them. Like, not the best things. I mean, I've never done anything horrible. Like, no, nothing horrible, horrible. But we've all done things where it was like, well, you know, that wasn't the best thing in the world. But you don't go on the internet and say it. I mean, sometimes I do. I'm thinking now of when I was, and I was only young. I was young, like very young. I was like eight years old. But me and my friend Jonathan, we had a bowl of yuck. What I did is I got a Quality Street tin. And then everything that I could think of horrible, like a witch's cauldron, went in there in this Quality Street tin. And we left it out the back of the... Uh, like we used to wee in it, me and Jonathan. Like a Quality Street tin. We just like... like We found a slug, we threw that in there. Like all this rubbish. like it, Just a little Quality Street tin around the back of the garage. Me and Jonathan weed in it. <laughs> I mean, I was nine years old. I was eight years old. Like That's not my best... It's not going on my... Like if we're doing a wedding speech, I'm not pr bringing that out. But I've said it on the internet now. I've done what I just said about this guy. Like, why would I make that mistake? No one needed to know that. No one needed to know that. That's, you know, you could have just forgot that. You didn't have to... If you, I, I encourage you to forget it. No one needed to know about the yuck, but I did it. A bit like that. This guy's on the internet. He's like, okay, going to do myself a YouTube video. Going to make one for my channel. Going to share something with my subscribers on Facebook. Uh, what have we got today? Well, done a bit of mediuming. -ing. They've seen me talk to the dead. So they're into that. They like a bit of that. Oh, I tell you what. What about that compost I've been, I've been maturing? What about that vintage compost I've been maturing? Maybe I could tell them all about the meat scraps and the flies. That's it. I tell you what as well. We'll get out there and we'll do a nice thumbnail. Me and the compost. Like that nice thumbnail with me and the compost. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> Richard Howard, I strongly suggest you hand this video over to the relevant authority for proper scrutiny along with chat. It'd be interesting to hear their take, highly compelling. <laughs> if you think the police have got time to watch all this bollocks on the internet, you've got another thing coming. They can't even they can't even stop the rapers <laughs> in their own midst. Why do I say these things? Oh, I do I do think it though. I, I, I tell you what, the thing is, right, with the police, I'll say just a little, you know, kudos for the police at the end a little bit, is that I think they're just underfunded. They're like cut to the bone. And all you've got left is the ones that stuck it out, like didn't move on to a better job for better pay. Uh, the working conditions, whatever, you know, the grit it out, the ones that enjoy it. I don't know. Like, you know, you've got problems. If you're underfunded, you need twice the amount of money going in. You need people with good wages at the top, like to aspire to, so that you can say this is a career and I can do my best here and like. And then you need 
We should do an episode on police. We will, because I've got a criminal psychologist. <laughs> Sorry, a forensic psychologist. Forensic means as it applies to the law. Sorry for blowing my nose without the mute on that time. Uh, forensic psychologist Stephen the Dead joins me on Thus Podcast on this channel. Check out the playlist. And we want to do an episode on prisons. I've got it planned. We've got ideas. Uh, we want to do an episode on crime. We've done one about what makes a crime. What makes it a crime is there. Uh, the problem with the police service at the moment is whatever you hope for from them, they're underfunded. So you need double the funding. Sorry, I can't breathe out my nose again. All this chuffing. You need double the funding. And you also need, you need, in my opinion, you need to regenerate and revive and renew. And that means lots of young people in the force. Not your old hands with the tr truncheons and the old ideas. but And you need some of that. You need some strong people there, of course. But you also need a big influx of younger people with, like, you know, modern people, younger people that can understand the world as it is and can police it accordingly. Um, I need Sudafed. I tend not to take all that sort of rubbish, you know. It's not rubbish, it is, you know, it does stuff, but I tend just to suffer. I'd rather know how I feel than, uh, having said that, you know, whatever, I smoke weed, don't I, but... Um, uh, can't breathe out my nose. So now's a good time to, to knock it on the head anyway, which is what Paul said, isn't it? Which is what Paul said. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, hopefully you've had a good time today. Hopefully you've had a good time. It's not all doom and gloom, Yeah. It's life. It's gritty. It's rough. It's tough. It's life. You've got to try and look at things and laugh at them sometimes. There are some people that are supporters of this channel that are like Susan, I'm thinking of specifically here, who might be going through a bit of a tough time at the moment. It might not be easy to laugh at me and this episode or whatever. She might not even be here at the end of it. But uh, you might find, even in the tough times, things that you can reflect on and smile about. My granddad, who I, you know, God rest his soul, I loved him to bits. Uh, he was always one with a joke he was always one with a kind word and a joke my cousin mark uh he's always one with a, a crack in a joke and you know when things are tough we're human and we feel these things and we suffer but we can also reflect and laugh and you know look back on what made us happy and you know those sort of things so we tend on on this channel we tend to pendulum swing between something quite serious and then something a bit of a laugh so i hope you've had a bit of a laugh today check out all my other work Make sure you do. Thank you for all your encouragement. All your, your new subscriptions are, are huge. Uh, super chats, coffee.coms, massive, massive. Like, if I can make this my my full time, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to need to eat. I'm going to need to support and expand. I'm going to show you that I'm not just taking that money and just throwing it out the window. I'm going to show you that we can make something like a step up as well. And also, I'm going to bring in more people. I've said this before, more voices. So that's why we've got the call-in show tomorrow on Speak Pipe. If you want to send a message to Super Chuffer, send it on the Speak Pipe. We'll be discussing Nicola Bully again. We'll be revising the case. I think I just saw Snips there. What a great cat crowd. Snips, it's, it's great that these people are here, isn't it? And it's lovely that... Um, We've all got different ideas as well. I'm sure there's some people in chat that don't have the same political ideas and this and that, but we can all get on. We can all have a laugh. We don't have to just like row about things all the time. But yeah, tomorrow's episode will be uh, Nicola Bully again, a bit more serious. We're going to review the police statement that the family made, check it for statement, you know, check its psychology. We're going to also look at uh, hopefully the other red flags that Paul we finished we didn't finish that video of Paul's and we've got your call in so depending on how many messages you leave me and what ideas you've got we'll talk about them as well uh, I'll, I did just pop that in chat as well didn't I? I'll pop that in chat one more time so that you've got that and I'll tweet it and I'll set up the live so that you can see it when it's coming up um, otherwise enjoy yourselves have a good evening and watch all my stuff please <laughs> Click on that live button there. Scroll down. Just scroll down for a bit. Pick a randomer. Have a laugh. See what happens. Whoa, it's only a video. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you. It's only a video. Get that down, you. It's only a cock. It's not going to hurt you. Suck on that. Anyway, look, don't... I shouldn't have said that at the end. <laughs> Spoiled it at the end now. Spoiled it at the end. And yeah, today we've met and investigated this chuffer. And I hope you've enjoyed that investigation. I hope you've reached you with a different idea of the world hope it's not gone over the overboard thank you everyone in chat thank you for your thank yous 
Thank you for your thank yous. I'm going to let this little run a little bit for your chat just a little bit there because I, I do get the impression that sometimes I switch it off and people are like still saying things in chat. So um, you're free to talk to each other in chat now. You're free to talk. Talk amongst yourselves for a while. It's fine. You don't need me. You don't need me. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's fine. Look, I can see you talking to each other. It's fine then. Fine. Yeah. Ta so Mary Lee, take care of everyone. Everyone, everyone else, not me. Yeah, fine. You talk to everyone then, Mary. No, no, you don't. You know, you're fine. You don't need me. No, it's fine. I'll just go. Over. I'm going over here. Oh, you, you don't need me. I'm over here now. I'm away. I've got some. I've probably got something to do over here. I'll tidy up. I'll turn off the green screen. Look. I'll turn off the light. I'll tidy up. I'm over here tidying up. You don't need me. Turn on the light now. I'm surplus to requirements on my own fucking stream. They're all talking to each other. They're all talking to each other. Get the dog. Let's meet them. <laughs> Come to daddy. Come on, you chuffer. Come to your daddy. Come to your daddy. Oh. Who's this little chuffer? Who's this little chuffer? Oh, he's a little chuffer. Oh, daddy's little chuffer on the internet now. Oh. There's daddy's little chuffer. Oh, look at him. Mm. Ain't you a good boy? Mm. Mm. Mm, he's a little chuffer. Yeah. Mm. There you go. You've seen the dog now. <laughs> what more do you want? What more do you want? Talking to each other in chat. Talking to each other in chat. What more do you want? <laughs> it's the guy from Queen. <laughs> it's Bob Marley. Little chuffer. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep each other buoyed along. You know, we'll keep this going. We'll keep this going. You've got to keep right on to the end of the road. You've got to keep right on to the end. When you're tired and weary, still journey on. Actually, I want to, I'll do it properly, shall I? Shall I do it properly? No, I can't sing like a football hooligan. Go on then. Out you go, you chuffer. Oh, you're in now. You're in. You're in with your daddy. Um, I just quickly grabbed my lyrics. I should know these off by heart, of course. Keep right on to the end of the road. Keep right on to the end. Though the way be long, you let your heart beat strong. Keep right on to the end. Though you're tired and we're, what? Hang on, I want to get. I'm jumping to jumping in it. How am I getting this wrong? I read it out as a speech at my birthday. <laughs> as you go through life, okay, of course. As you go through life, it's a long, long road. There'll be joys and sorrows too. As we journey on, we'll sing this song for the boys in royal blue. We'll often parties on, partisan. We will journey on. Keep right on to the end of the road. Keep right on to the end. Though the way be long, let your heart beat strong and keep right on to the end. Though you're tired and weary, still journey on till you come to your happy abode. And with all our love, we'll be dreaming of, we'll be there at the end of the road. Birmingham! 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 <laughs> you be good, my little Pukos. You be good. Uh, my, my, my dog's name is... Um, Marlo. <laughs> Don't go shouting his name on the wall, though. He's not coming over to you. He's my little chuffer, isn't he? You heard me say his name. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Do I live? I do live near Birmingham. Let's not get too personal on the internet, you chuffers. Don't want you all coming around my house, walking my dog for me. <laughs> you just be a good chuffer. Listen, you just be a good chuffer. Remember, you be good. You be good. Because if you can't be good, then you're naughty. <laughs> <laughs> 